fucking government are cunts. <laughs> Did you know I just... Yeah. Were you just... Oh, right, okay. <laughs> you literally just come off your phone. I thought you were just saying it. <laughs> well, they're just trying to look after us, Adam. Are they? It's because people like your people can't, you know, they know what your people are like. Do you know what I think happened? They're trying to protect you from yourself, all right? What I think happened was last night they announced that Manchester, West Yorkshire and Lancashire had to stop going indoors um, of other people's houses because that's what's causing the the spikes, which don't exist, of the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, But you could still go to the pub with the same people. And I think they thought they would get away with saying that. And no one would notice that it was quite clearly targeted at Muslims celebrating Eid. (laughs) Yeah, but why can't Muslims just go to the pub and celebrate Eid? I've said this for years. (laughs) What's going on a boozer? Fucking. (laughs) Two birds, one stone. (laughs) Salam alaikum, my friends. Welcome to Weatherspoons. Oh, well, like a salam. Oh, um, I think they, they thought they were going to get away with it, and then everyone's gone, it's fucking dead obvious what you're doing there, you know, Matt cocking your hands. Well, it's the economy, isn't it? You stop people going around to everyone's houses, the economy's fine. Close pubs and restaurants down. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to lose my job. They're just, even if, obviously, it, it, the timing of it is, is pretty brutal, and all these spikes are, like weirdly you look at the areas that are in like special measures almost yeah basically northampton and peterborough i'm like mm, nothing rings a bell there but leicester bradford oldham pendle darwin and blackburn <laughs> you're like okay bradford you're like oh god there is a that is a the disproportionately high percentage of asian population yeah it's so obvious what they were doing and they've been called out and now they've gone no, well now no and and my hancock this morning on the news literally got asked the, the question can comedy clubs open on the 1st of August? They met. They said comedy clubs, specifically, and he said yes. And then two hours later, it's too dangerous. What's happened in that two hours? He's a fucking baby-faced cunt, and I hate him, and I'll be glad when he's dead. Him and Jamie Oliver, both of them. Wow, Jamie Oliver taking some fucking heat. Yeah, I just don't like him, and it was just the forefront of my head. I don't wish death on many people, but... I'd, I, you know, we don't really do politics loads on this, but... No, but this doesn't feel like politics. I feel like literally my mental health this week has been all right. I've I've felt quite good, and I've I said, Jade's noticed it in me. Jade's been like, "You seem so much back to yourself," and I was like, "It's because I know I've got nine days of gigs at Hot Water Comedy Club, Mate. starting on the first of August, ending on the ninth, and I knew I was going back starting tomorrow. I was back at Hot Water Comedy Club doing what I love, and now a day before it's meant to happen, Hot Water, by the way." Please support them when they open back up. They spent so much money getting the club COVID safe, making sure the whole venue was adhering to the the social distancing measures and, you know, one way in, one way out, making sure all the seating, that, like they've got the bookings for the whole weekend. They've gone, right, that group sits there. Full seating plans for every show, doing three shows a day, making sure they've got enough time to clean the whole venue, hiring extra staff who they've now got to sack. And then... They've get, they've given them two weeks to get ready for it, which wasn't long enough. They fucking managed to do it, and it's not just them. It's every other comedy club in the country that was about to open has gone, right, this is the two weeks we've got to sort this place out and make sure we're making it safe for our customers and our comedians to come back. And they spend all that money, put all that effort in, and a day before the government go, oh, no, you can't do it now. It's, it's just fucking infuriating. Make a fucking decision and fucking stick to it. If we're in lockdown, then let's wait till the virus is gone. Stop doing this half ass bullshit. You, you're trying to save lives at the expense of the economy and then you go, oh, hang on. No, the economy's more important. So we'll, we'll save the economy at the expense of lives and now it's back to, we need to save lives and fuck the economy. Pick a fucking approach. Do what New Zealand did and go, right, Fuck the economy for a bit. Let's make sure this virus goes away. And now New Zealand's back open and they haven't had a fucking virus case apart from two British people who arrived from Britain, surprisingly. It, it's a joke. So do one thing or the other, but this fucking halfway house between trying to manage the virus and manage the economy, it's never going to work. The virus is going to be here until there's a vaccine and you're going to be opening and closing businesses. And when businesses don't know what they're doing and who they need to hire and whether they're going to be open tomorrow... The, the, there's not going to be anything left. There's not going to be any 
small shops left, independent shops. There's not going to be any comedy clubs. Pubs are going to shut for good. And they're going to be turned into a fucking subway or a pizza hut. But they're going to close, hang on, not just to play devil's advocate, but they are trying to get these things open. But there, I know that it sounds like it's all over the shop and they're deciding on the fly. But they are trying to get them open. But there has always been ifs, buts, and maybes about these these openings. If they if they err on the side of caution, they'd still be closed till November, January, like we initially thought they would be. And then they're definitely going bust, aren't they? No, absolutely not. No, no. So I've spoke to people who because they're like, getting insurance. The, the cost of opening a venue is massively higher than just having an empty venue. That's why, like, when people have still got the lease on a place, you, you'll see, like, a, a pub or, like, an old restaurant will just be empty for a few months because the people who own it might want to reopen it again rather than sell it on. Yeah. Because it's not that expensive to, like, it, it is expensive. To mothball it. To, to just, like, just, let's just leave that for a bit. So if they went to all these places now, I'm like, look, we need to make a decision and you can't open till November. And in November you can open. And then if it gets to September and it looks like that needs to be pushed back, do it. But you can't give people 24 hours notice. No, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's a fucking joke. And I appreciate them trying to get everything open. Like, I, I, we were all surprised and, like, it was a nice surprise that gigs were being, I mean, initially we thought it was going to be in July, didn't we? But, like, August was still three months more than you expected. It's still, like, a surprise. It's the hope that kills you, though, isn't it? It... It's to, to change tact it's like when your a day before 3-0 down and you get you get a goal and you're like, oh, it might happen now. Like, <laughs> And then you get beat 6-1. I just, I, I feel it's so, it's so easy to go, oh, the fucking government are such dickheads. But when you're making up policy on the fly and announcing things at night, in the middle of the night, and two, like you said, two hours after something's been decided... It's a shit show, isn't it? It's ju it's just infuriating, and it it's messing with people's heads. I'm gonna be pissed off now for a week because I know I should be at work. I know I should be doing the gig. And if a week ago they hadn't gone, yeah, you can all open on the first of August. Way everything's going fine, then it would be nowhere near as bad. You can't keep telling people they can go back to work, and then they can't, and it's it's just. It's infuriating. They need they need to make a decision. Put a fucking date on it. And they if, can't. That's not how viruses work. But you can put a date on it and then a few weeks in advance go, that might need to be pushed back. 24 yeah. hours is, is just not... You can't... But it's. I know the New Zealand, like, it's different. It's They're fucking... There's like four million of them and they're in the corner of, like, the world. We're a different, like, nation, size of economy, size of country. Like, London is a huge international hub. They, the government have had a more difficult job. I sound like I'm a fucking, I'm back in the Tories, but it's not a case of like, right, we have set this date and we'll just set that date for later on and we'll stick to it because they're, they have to be, they have to be able to change things. And all of these stages were clearly mapped out like this will happen if the infection rate is down, if it's, a, if it's acceptable. So we all knew there could be some fluctuation. You put 24 what, how hours. How is it a day? A day before they're opening. And I've got a, ven I've got a venue owner messaging me going, I want to ring you and tell you what's happened, but I'm literally that upset. I'm close to tears. It's it's not even that it's a day before. It's the fact that on this day, on the news this morning, they said, no, they can open. Je Jess at the Frog and Bucket, like last night, overnight, she put on Facebook and was like, look, really sorry, we can't open. Then she contacted her MP. I think it was the mayor of Manchester, actually, Andy Burnham. She spoke to Andy Burnham and was like, can comedy clubs open? He was like, yeah, you can. She was given reassurances by Manchester's mayor this morning. The fucking health secretary was on Good Morning Britain or BBC, whatever. She, he was on fucking Sutton. And this morning literally said, comedy clubs can open. What's changed in two hours? How fucking... They've changed their mind. They've gone, oh, we've got that data. And, then and Dom Dominic Ma Cummings has sat there and gone, yeah, can't do it. Because I think he's genuinely running the show. That fucking lying, cheating, sniveling, looks, looks like, like me, motherfucker. Back of fucking Quiddle's head in the fucking <laughs> first Harry Potter. <laughs> he's like that in the in, in, in number 10 Downing Street. <laughs> Tell them they can't.
can't open. I have strength enough for I, this. I have seen too many viral videos Fucking calling me a lying... headed cunt. Barnard Castle visiting lying cunt. Do you think that first bit of uh, the podcast will age well on YouTube? <laughs> Can I just tell you... Adam found out about that about a minute and a half before we started recording. And he walked into the studio half an hour ago and sunshine, lollipops, <laughs> do, 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 do. we've got to Justin Morehouse on. It's lovely and it's lovely. And then we all checked Twitter and it was like, <sighs> oh, fuck. You all right, boo? It's, it's just like, I... You're annoyed, aren't you? I'm pissed off. I don't know the right thing to do. I don't know where the comedy club should be opening. I just know that you shouldn't be telling them they can open at 8 o'clock in the morning and then at fucking 1 o'clock in the afternoon telling them they can't. It's basically, it's arranging a date with someone and then cancelling while they're on the bus, isn't it? It's a cunt's move. Get in touch with me if you're interested in coming to an illegal comedy show. <gasps> I am going to find a fucking basement that will just let me in. I'll put a mic up. I'll put some lights up and we'll run an illegal comedy show. We'll take your temperature on the door. If you're too hot, you'll get told to fuck off. Everyone will be as safe as possible. If you if you are a listener to this podcast, if you are a fan of mine, a fan of Dan's and a fan of stand-up in general, I am going to find somewhere in Liverpool in the next week and I am going to run a completely illegal stand-up comedy show. I'm going to get comedians on. There'll be about seven or eight of us. We'll all do 10 minutes each. I'm not being told what to fucking do anymore by people who haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing. If, you, if you're worried about getting sick, don't fucking come. The gig's happening. Go to adamrow.co.uk, sign up to my mailing list, and I'll send a mailer out this week. Yes. Are you actually going to do the temperature thing? I'll get that my barber's got one of them guns. I'll see if he'll lend me it. I've got one for Etta. We stick it in her ear, you know, when she's got a temperature. We you could just twat that on someone's head, couldn't you? Yeah, but there could be, like, coronavirus in the ear. You can't do that. You need a gun, where you? You need a gun. Yeah. Have you seen that clip be... of... What should we do? Stock Calpol as well, just in case the temperature's... No? Calpol, paracetamol, ropatussin. Yeah. We'll do... Instead of Sambuca <laughs> shots, we'll just do shots of Calpol. I'd fucking love that. Oh, my God. It's the best. Yeah. I love it. It's like cherry drops in liquid form. And, you know, oh, the sweets. it's a special type of sweetie and nostalgia and everything. Mm. When we were kids, we were driving I up love to my nana's. I Diora Light as well. Diora Light. I'm only joking. It's right. horrible, isn't it? Um, Good hangover cure, that though. Like, I know. Preemptive thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't you also take, like, like antifungal medicine <laughs> and fucking pregnancy vitamins before you go to sleep? Your, hang <laughs> your hangover techers are fucking amazing. What I do, right? What I do, I take, I take some anti-balding medicine, but I put it up <laughs> me fucking ass, right? And then I apply to become a member of the Liberal Democrat Party. <laughs> And then I lie on a bed of amber and I fucking, I wake up fine. <laughs> your, your hangover techniques are fucking amazing. I remember driving to my nana's once when I was a kid and um, she left me in the car. She went to the shop and my sister went as well. And I, there was cow pole on the back shelf for some unknown fucking reason. And I was like, oh, this is naughty. And I was old enough to know to do that. You know, the childproof lock unlocked it, pressed down, unlocked it. And down some fucking cowpaw. Thank God there wasn't a full bottle. I don't know what it could do to you. But I, I was like, mm, it's so sweet and tasty. Uh, it was just lovely. There's a black currant Nearly Cavonia OD'd on one cowpaw. as well. Like for adults. Like a, there's a black currant Cavonia. What's Cavonia? Cough medicine with clout. Oof. It's the official strap line on the outfit. <laughs> yeah, night nurse is good if you want a good night's sleep. Horlicks. Me mum used to have Horlicks just as a drink, like in the afternoon. <laughs> just before a nap. <laughs> no, just like cleaning the living room. Just like, just like the taste of a Horlicks. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Fancy a drink as well. I'm going to have a drink all tonight. That. I'm going to have a drink tonight at that uh, conference we're attending. Yeah. What are we, Illegal gig-wise, looking forward to that conference. Uh, illegal gig-wise, can I DJ? Yeah. Because <laughs> I just heard illegal... And then you said gig, and I was like, rave! I wanted to be like, legal <laughs> rave! There's been some illegal raves in Liverpool. Really? In the woods and that, yeah. Yeah. 
I used to go to those free parties. We used to call them free parties. Yeah, we don't, I think as once you label something illegal as an organizer, you're sort of asking for trouble. Free parties, like la, la, la. it's like the Nazis. You know Adolf Hitler's Nazi. They were like the National Socialist Party. That's what they called themselves. They were like we're the National Socialist Party. And and, it, and honestly, on the face of it, if you be naive, you're like, well, I like the country and socialism's for everybody. <laughs> hey, but when you're like you're the Nazi, you're like. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. So we they were like free parties. So you'd go clubbing and it was always I was seeing a girl called Faye, who's from near Leeds, and it'd be like, Yeah, you're right, where are you going afterwards? This we'd be like clubbing in Leeds. There's a free party near Geisley. And he'd be like, Right, well that sounds medieval. We'd get a fucking taxi to some like back of a leisure center and then into the woods, and there'd just be twenty five bell ends sat on the jackets, high as fuck, no drugs. One bell end would have like a like a five liter side cider bottle, and you'd regret all your life choices. So it sounds really edgy, like we're going to a free party. Where in the woods? The fucking busies don't know. Yeah, man, we're just living our lives. Two hours later, you're coming down, and you're freezing your tits off in West Yorkshire. <laughs> It's just not as crazy as it feels like it's going to be. Like, a legal rave? Mm, there's no toilets. The woods is a toilet, though, isn't it? Like, <laughs> But that's a dangerous game to play, isn't it? You've got drugs in your system. You need the toilet. How far from the, like, base camp do you go? 100 yards. I'm the dickhead who'd be on pills in a field in West Yorkshire, in a woods in West Yorkshire, go for a shit and get lost. Like... 100 yards away. I, I just... Uh, oh, you stay with an earshot of the. You, you, what you don't want to do is go so far, you end up closer to a different rave. <laughs> <laughs> then you end up back. Then you're like, I oh, know none of these people. It's basically like uh, you've accidentally reenacted like prehistoric life. <gasps> you're not from our tribe. <laughs> no, I am from other tribe, but we're hard house. Oh. <laughs> Is that your impression of prehistoric we're, man? We're, we're Was there a prehistoric man? Minimal techno. What? Is man prehistoric? No. That's yeah, the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> what? There's no prehistoric man. No, of course there is. There's lo- all, nearly all man is prehistoric. Let's have a look. Do you know what prehistoric means? It means recorded history. <laughs> what the fuck has just popped up on your laptop? You've never really had a laptop up before, but I can see it's going to be... Interesting. Why did gay porn just pop up on your laptop? Because before we started recording the episode, I put gay porn on it so that... When you popped up? Yeah, just show you, just make you laugh. But just what freaked me out is, A, when you pulled up that picture that quick, I was like, holy shit, you have fast internet. And also, mate, prehistoric man was doing a lot of gay blowjobs. Stop, oh, mate, come on, is that what you Googled? And gay porn came, oh, (laughs) my God. Oh my god! Oh, Michael I'm Jordan not- and Scotty Pippen. I am. <laughs> That's like the uncut version of like. Whoa! <laughs> Do you know when you see gay porn, you almost want it to be. This is. Do you know what I googled? Borderline offences. Want to see what I Offens- googled? What do you think I googled? Honestly, I d- <laughs> that cannot be social distanced. That that is. Can I just ex- explain it? Massive. Right. Okay. Massive. Like gay porn, All right? Um, that's someone. That's a man kissing another man's bum bum, and they look. They're really big men. I don't, I, I don't know. It's he's still got his sunglasses. On. Oh, mate! <laughs> Black guys love wearing sunglasses in porn. Cool as fuck. That is a that is an aggressive position, isn't it? Don't, oh yeah, prehistoric man. Yeah, it's just whatever you know. Like before recorded history. Yeah. Like, oh, is that what prehistoric means? So what did we said it? Yeah. Prehistory, yeah. Yeah. But I that mean, it doesn't exist, does it really? No. No, I know what you mean. You mean existence of all time. Yeah. No, before time didn't exist. So this is before records began. Yeah, before there's any recorded history. So how do we know what he looks like? What do you mean? Well, if it wasn't recorded, how do we know what he looked like? What you mean that's that that that's <laughs> they found a skull. That's that's like a neolithic man. And they've regenerated it using technology. But if they found the skull, then it's po- no. It's, it's past history, isn't it? A skull's not a skull's not history. Is it not? No, it's a fucking bones of a dead person. We're talking like, you know, like oh, on this date in AD six five hundred or something, old Jeff the Great of fucking 
So it's Jesus Eritrea. Pierre Salah now. No, Jesus is part of history. You know, because it's quite famously been written down, all that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you know. A lot, of, a lot of people still into that. It goes, it goes Fifty Shades, the Bible, Harry Potter. So, so hang on, your Uncle Jeff, is he prehistory? No, 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 because you've met him. Right, how are we jumping between, I want to come back to gay porn. What are we talking about prehistoric man for? Do you know what? When you get two big dudes rimming each other up on a screen, that's yeah. going to break my concentration. <laughs> it really, it really is. That was so much. <laughs> that was so much. Just a sensory overload for you. But I honestly thought it was prehistoric man for a bit. I was like, okay, how did we ever get to this point if that's what everyone was doing to them? I think, honestly, with prehistoric man, I don't think homophobia would have existed. You know, when they were just like, uh, 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 you know, there's no rules, was there? I think it probably got a bit physical in places. And I think if Uggabug uh, 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 was a big dude and been like, you know, doing a lot of upper body, I think he could basically do what he wanted to most people in his life. And there was prehistoric trans little... people. <laughs> I do not know and choose not to pontificate. <laughs> I've decided, I've decided, I've decided Why? not to ask those. I don't know. Why? And you want to talk about it? I was just trying, I went talking about prehistoric gay guys. Yeah, so the next logical step from there is trans people, isn't it? LGBT. Right. Look at you. And then after that, you've got the Q, which is um, uh, quarry workers. <laughs> How can you be so... Welcome to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and quarry workers <laughs> march. How can you be so angry with the government for the first 12 minutes of a podcast and then be doing prehistoric LGBT <laughs> jokes? <laughs> yeah, I think... I honestly think... I know it sounds ridiculous, and I think prehistoric man was way more like, listen, I'm massive, you're small, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> I think it was probably, there was a lot of bullying. I think it I think it was probably, a, it was a bit rapey. Yeah, they used to fucking bash them over the head with a big stick and then bum them, didn't they? Yeah, I think what's happened there is you've thought of cartoons that you've seen as a child of like, um, bum. I think it, but I don't think it was a million miles away from Captain that. Captain Caveman. But was there a caveman that Captain just came caveman, out and he was like, Captain uh, Caveman, uh, uh, Captain uh. that cave. Because the women wore like the, <laughs> you know, like the saber tooth tiger skins. They wore them as like a bra and knicker set. I've seen did it on they, loads of stuff. Did they not? Not seen the Flintstones. <laughs> and then maybe one day, Ugbug was like, uh, man, uh, just got an extra, like found his own squirrel, skinned it, and then just put it over his boobs and was like, not Ugbug. Bugetta. And they was just uh, that was he was the first trans or gay. No, no, trans, yeah. Yeah. So you do think But I honestly, I know I'm 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 not painting a great history of prehistoric man out there. I honestly don't think sexuality was a big thing. I think I think basically the biggest dude just bang what he want. And I don't know if you were gonna be able to stop him. Yeah. And I think like prison, isn't he? Prehistoric man was just prison. I think it, for it, everyone, everyone I, was in prison. I wonder if it was a bit like you know, like the 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 gorilla pack. There's one dude. So the prehistoric man, I was like pet dinosaurs. <laughs> I honestly think we're traversing potentially quite an interesting point, but the fact is, we're both morons and we can't keep concentrating on something. What are you ask, genuinely asking me? No, you're not. Don't be silly. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you genuinely asking me about dinosaurs? Did he have like a T Rex? <laughs> what they rode into town? Nah, I'm joking. I am joking. But uh, I, I, I think it would have been very like I'm the biggest dude. Unless you can kill me, I'm banging all the women and you, Steve. Because the pterodactyl you look nice. was alive closer to this time now than it was to the T Rex. Oh my god! Dinosaurs he's, were around. He's doing for fucking, fucking time. He's mate. doing dinosaur. Facts. What did they get done? Fuck all. <laughs> is that true? What you just said? Yeah, they didn't build anything. Did you? Is that a, is that a true fact that the yeah. the pterodactyl is that late late period dinosaur? I, might, I think it was pterodactyl. I just spell it P T. Uh, there it is. 
Is it, a, is it a silent P? Closer to human. Can you learn stuff on this podcast, don't you? What have you got? It's nice that the gay porn didn't come up. So pterodactyls, as I say, they began in 1846. That can't be right. Jesus Christ. What? They were discovered in 1846. Is that what it means? That can't be right. That means they were around oh. after slavery. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Queen Victoria's on the throne. It's the age of pterodactyls. <laughs> I don't think you suit having a fuck it, having an internet connection with this laptop in front of you. So right, far, so it, it far, hasn't come up with what I said. So was. far, we've had prehistoric man, gay women, and now f- fake pterodactyl. Pterodactyls can fly 67 miles an hour. Jesus Christ. Cru- they can cruise at 56. Yeah. They see me cruising. How do you think you do as a... a pre- just concentrate. How do you think you do as a prehistoric man? How do you think you do? I reckon, I, I reckon I'm more suited to that time. I don't know if you are. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I see. I I love your confidence. It's it, it, honestly the Adam Rowe brand of confidence is phenomenal. Because I honestly think if I went, listen, here's a sewing kit. How do you reckon you do? Fucking dad good. I've got nimble fingers. I've always thought I it. Haven't you know? Fucking. I'm not good with like fiddly I things. Fucking love a plique. I, no, I, I'm not good with fiddly things. I if the pound. The money collapses, society goes down, and it goes a bit more feral, and it goes back to prehistoric man. It goes back to like who's the biggest dude? Oh, 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 I am. Oh, good, good. I am in a lot of trouble. I reckon I'd be all right. I need two. I've sh- got a baseball bat. No, I'd. St- Do you honestly think you'd be okay? Yeah, I reckon I'm more suited to like older times. I reckon the further you go back, the more suited I am. Do you know what I mean? I st- I fart in front of Jay's all the time. You're not telling me prehistoric woman was like, uh, what are you doing? Oh yeah, I see what you mean. She just took it. Do you know what I mean? You, however, if you went back in your modern form and you just got thrown back into like a tribal prehistoric man setting, you would be a thousand times more feminine than the most feminine female homo sapien. Maybe for like a week, but then I... I, (laughs) Mate, Ugbo, if you just got transported back to like 100,000 BC and plonked in it, Ugbo would be like, oh, he pretty... Oh. oh, yeah, because prehistoric woman would be fucking hairy. Her teeth would be gone. Mate, if you lived to the age of 20... Did you they would... not brush the teeth? Mate, they, they're, it's literally what killed off most humans was some fucking problem with the tooth. Like, if you go back 100,000 years, I bet life expectancy was like 20, 20 years. Do you know what I've always wondered? If you were 25, you were like granddad. If you turned up all shaved and wearing fucking aftershave and you'd clean your balls in the last six months, the Ugg Bug would be like, oh, he pretty Turn lady. Turn up and time. Like, today's podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> I <It> fucking <laughs> own you. He'd be like, oh, he's so shiny. Oh. I've and always wondered about teeth. Right. Like, you know, we have to brush our teeth or they'll fall out and they become weak and you get gum disease and all that shit. Yeah. Why don't dogs have to brush their teeth? Oh, my Because they d- they've got their different teeth. They've got stronger teeth. Why haven't we got them? How do we get them? Right. I think we've dealt with too much in this first <laughs> section. Borderline freak me out. If you take Adam's gigs away... And you give him an internet connected laptop, it doesn't help his ADD. <laughs> How We've just ended do I up. Get dog teeth. What it's ca- a simple fucking question. You've got two. Yeah. Canines. Are you hey. telling me I don't have to brush those two? I don't know, mate. I don't know how dog's teeth work. You're so mis- check? No. <laughs> Should we just take it? Well, let's have a little uh, word from our sponsors while you fucking work that out. Is that all right? How to brush your dog's teeth? Should I be brushing Minnie's teeth? Let's have a word from a sponsor. What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawordpod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie, something like that T-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Word live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawordpod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast 
every week on patreon.com slash have a word pod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash have a word pod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Just before we crack on with this bit, lads, I just want to say, any Liverpool fans listening, we don't do much fussy stuff on the pod, as you know, but got this amazing Alison Becker top from... Uh, sent to me free from an account on Instagram called at LFC Jürgen. Go and check him out and buy some stuff off him. He's that nice lad. Uh, and he sent me a free T-shirt. So, there you go. Fucking champions of England, lad! And if you are listening to the podcast and not watching it, uh, still go to Instagram.com slash LFC Jürgen. He's got loads of stuff. He's a dead sound lad. Just want to give him a little plug. What are we doing now, Dan? Got some uh, follow up. We've got some questions and some follow up. Have we? Well, that's good. Lewis Rolf says, All right, lads, been listening since day one, but this is first time I think, uh, felt compelled to write in. Just been listening to episode 77 where Adam was talking about Amy from his primary school having no arse. I found out it wasn't Amy, it was Kira. That's honestly not pertinent. Okay, sorry. It's not, is it, though? I mean, it, the bum hole is more important than the name. Do you not think? There's no context, have a word. Yeah. I mean, that's just... She could be called anything. She ain't got a bum hole. <laughs> she, she could be called Princess fucking whatever, but Princess she's... Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. <laughs> Consuela Banana Hammock? Did not you get that reference? No. Friends? Did you not watch Friends? Oh, shit. I'm not watching as much as you. Oh, you fucking pube. Just got into Bob's Burgers. I mean, it's good. Oh, my God. It's really good. It's funny. And my daughter loves it. And then she sat watching something good with my daughter. She's like, I want to watch Bob's Burgers. I'm like, fucking I do. And it's Comedy Central seems to have friends still all the time, Bob's Burgers, and I'm not sure they play anything else. That seems to be their like staple, like, we're going to throw this out. Oh, fresh off the boat as well. There seems what, to be a lot of That's always my argument. Like, in comedy, there's like a sneer towards friends, isn't there? Like, it's like uncool to say you like friends. Have you ever noticed that? Or do you not notice it because you well, don't we've, talk about we've it? we've talked about it on the pod before, haven't Have we? we? Yeah. Yeah. I just, that's always my argument is, until you've written a sitcom, which 20 years after it's cancelled, or ends, it wasn't cancelled, was it? They decided not to do it anymore. 20 years later, it's still on the number one comedy channel in the world for 12 hours a day. Then shut the fuck up. Yeah. It's like anything that's popular though. It's, it's like Michael McIntyre, and everyone's like, mm, I don't like Michael McIntyre. He's like, yeah, but he still lives in a house bigger than your yeah. fucking high school. And let's see you follow him, and then. <laughs> but I will say this. I think the friends dislike, if you come to someone my age, I'm 39, sort of grew up on friends. Yeah, like, all through my teenage years, yeah. that was the the thing. And I've gone back and done Seinfeld, but I was, Never a, watched Seinfeld. I was a baby when Seinfeld was out, and it wasn't on any British TV channels. Like It wasn't yeah. on Channel 4, like the same as it was with Friends. Seinfeld, got, going back, Seinfeld is excellent. It's such a good watch. And I think maybe without Seinfeld, there wouldn't be Friends as it was. I think there's definitely a sort of similarity. You can see it. And without Friends, there wouldn't be How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother was literally, like, apparently they're in, like, the the executive lounge of whatever the TV channel was, they were like, right, Friends is ending, and I want our channel to make the new one. So uh, right. we want six, five or six fr Friends. It's all about them, an ensemble cast, and it's mainly set in their apartment or two apartments and a public place. So they went for a bar instead of a coffee house, <laughs> and they literally went, and there's so many similarities like I, I watch both of them. I'm, I'm, I'm such a shit sitcom whore. Like for a comedian who's obsessed with comedy, the way I am, and dead sneery about stand up, and I know what I like, and this is good, and that shit. You're a two pints of lager and a yeah. packet of crisps. I love it. Just an open goal tapping of a sitcom. Um, when you said that initially, I was like, oh, that's not good. Like I sneer at that. Yeah. I find that uh, that great. Would you Alpha Alpha on the podcast and tell him it was good? He's very talented. Royal family. <laughs> I'd talk about the royal family that I really liked. Um, and you'd talk about two pints of log and a packet of Chris, and I'd be like, mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's so many similarities between How I Met Your Mother and Friends. Like, Ted from How I Met Your Mother is Ross. Right. They're both professors, they both date students. 
the the girl they're after for the whole series is Robin and Rachel, who are essentially the same people who right. wants to focus on the career but ends up falling for the the main character really. And then you've got Monica, who is um, Lily and Chandler's Marshall. And once they're together, they're together. There's a, a couple of wobbles, but they're a forever couple. And then you've got Barney, who is literally just Joey, just a Lothario who shags multiple women and never really wants to commit until he really falls in love with Rachel slash Robin. And then they didn't yeah. put Phoebe in it because she was always boring. I mean, the, there's a reason why How how I Met Your Mother isn't ever going to be held up as one of the all-time greats, is it? If it's a, basically a rebadge. Yeah, it is. But it's it's like The Office and Parks, Parks and Rec. Mm. The Office was groundbreaking when it was brought out over here. The documentary style sitcom, like turn into camera, little interviews with camera, like it was a documentary. And apparently they were like, right, what are we going to do? We need to do something like a spin-off. And that's when Parks and Rec was made by a different studio, by a different TV station. But if you watch Parks and Rec, you're like, yeah, this is the fucking office, except it's set in Pawnee, Indiana, and it's <laughs> under the guise of being Parks and Rec, but it's all the same. And with those sitcoms, they, they, they need you to suspend disbelief because they're just like, it's just a fucking laugh, mate. Yeah, yeah, it, Like, in Parks and Rec, there's a character who's, in the first season, there was a hole built and someone's a nurse and her boyfriend's falling in it. So they keep visiting them because they're like threatening legal action. And by series three, that nurse and that boyfriend both work at the Parks and Rec department. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, um, the city council need a, a nursery advisor role. And they're like, oh, you're perfect for it. And Chris Pratt is the guy. He ends up working up. It's just, they're not trying to make it realistic. It's just no. like, oh, shut up, you meth. It's just a yeah. fucking TV show. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all good fun. What about it? the one with the... Why well, I'm blanking on the name. How have we gone from the history of sitcoms from someone hasn't got a bumhole? We'll get we'll get back to it. <laughs> How I met your bumhole. We're, we're, we're so bad for this, you know. You're you're particularly bad today. Fuck off. I, uh, no, you're you're on one today. I think it's because you it's because our cage has been rattled and you'll deal with you I can see it in you. You're like enjoying yourself and anger, angry. And then and then and then funny and anger. And then fucking gay porn on the laptop. It's there's a lot going on. If you drink tonight, no, don't go. Where are you going? Where are you going on the internet? What are you, what, what are you doing? I Google bombing, but nothing's come up. Why has a child come up as bombing? There's a picture of a child. There is on Google. It's the first image. They're all like pretend bombing. I wanted some real stuff to. What's the one with the four four geeks and the hot girl? Why have I blanked on that? Wow. What's the sitcom that's like... Oh, Big Bang Theory. I mean, massively, massively popular. You're like... Have you seen that YouTube video? I've watched it. I've watched... Laura Laura liked it when we met. She was like, have you ever... And I was a bit snobby about it. I was like, yeah. But the YouTube where there's no laughter, there's no yeah, can laughter. Yeah, laughter off. I've watched that and, and you're like, yeah, it's just lighthearted. You just meant, yeah. It's meant to be for people who are just like, I can't be asked thinking about stuff. My complaint with these things is they're loved by people who only love them and and can't be asked with any more like difficult reading in terms of what they watch. They're like, no, I really like Parks and Rec and Big Bang Theory is amazing. What about something like Kirby and Fuse? Don't like it. It's just depressing. It's just weird. You're like, yeah, that's why fans of those shows get get criticised because it is very very easy watching. It doesn't. It doesn't. It isn't totally realistic. The characters are caricatures. They're ex. They're, 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 they're like they're not real. Yeah. But people are like, mm, I like it. That's what I like. That Bond. When me and Bondy lived together for a bit, he was like, we should write a sitcom. And I was like, right, okay. Well, I, I've never written a sitcom or done any writing. I've done UK club comedy for fifteen years, so it's a mistake for, me, for to think I'm an expert on comedy. I he's just as much an expert on sitcoms as me. And he was like, no, but it'd be good while, while we're living together. We should do something. And then he was like, he was like, right, this is my idea, yeah. It's like a sitcom set in a games workshop. Right. Like, because it's not been done. And then, right, one of the characters is like, like a fucking, a really geeky guy. And he's dead into the games workshop. And then one of the guys is like a cool Asian guy. 
And he's like not even bothered. But he just works there. And then the manager's I like, can already, in my head, I can see you pitching this to the BBC and them going, that's really good for our diversity, <laughs> actually. And then, and then he was like, and then there's a girl that works there and she's oh, hot, but she doesn't really care about it and everyone fancies her. And the manager is slightly older and he used to be into Games Workshop, but like now he's not bothered about it. And I was like, Bondi, without... Like ripping off you've a sitcom. Physics for you've literally for come up. It's it, how have you managed to do that? You've basically gone. This is it's exactly what we were talking about on the Patreon episode. We were talking about formulate comedy, and we were talking about Lee Evans. Even though it's a different joke, you've sort of seen the joke before. That sitcom is he's managed to come up with this, and he was like, "No, but it's original because no one's ever done it." And you're like. It's not fucking original. It's, it's a like Big a, Bang Theory. It's a Big Bang workshop. Theory. It's the it, it's the it's the it crowd. It's all of those sitcom ideas, and essentially what you're doing is got a character, but it's like an idea of a person. It's not a real person, and that type of of like like TV comedy just makes me feel a bit meh. I'm like, wow, it's it's, and then you watch Fleabag just as something in the last few years that's been interesting. And you're watching, you go, I've never seen this story before, and I'm laughing. I'm re- yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. exciting, it's and it's original. It. Mate, it's just basically about a woman's, like, dealing with her sexuality and her mental health, and it's incredibly honest, and it's challenging. And, and you're watching it going, I'm laughing at this, but I'm also a little bit amazed that someone has had the bravery to write this script and be going, these are real people and I'm putting them in situations that are believable, but no one's watching it going, sin it. And I, I, that is to me way more exciting. And I get the lighthearted TV stuff, but you also want something to be exciting and original. I think there's an app. There's absolutely a place for both. And I, this is, and I tell people when, cause like certainly with this podcast as well now, and there was only a couple of months where I was doing gigs after this podcast started, but people were starting to come to my shows as a result of this show. And because we've spoken about stand-up and comedy in depth like this, I think some people think I'm a proper comedy snob, and I'm not. So some people be like, oh, you know, Jack Whitehall, he's fucking shit, isn't he? And Jack Whitehall is not someone I would watch, but I think he absolutely needs to be there for the people that do. We've had so many emails that sort of hint, at, like literally got emails here from listeners and they're just, I mean, our listeners uh, take the piss and everything, yeah, yeah. but you can feel the tone of it. It's not being cunty, but like even Harry Robinson here, would you lids ever go on something like I'm a celebrity to give you a career boost? Yeah. I.e. Joel, Joel Domi. And he's, and what Harry Robinson do, is doing there is going, would you ever do what he fucking you, did? Will you take the piss out of Joel Domic? Because I'm not that king. <laughs> would you do it? <laughs> and it's the same with Jack Whitehall. There's an undercurrent with any email we get about Jack Whitehall. That, that people are like, is he cunt? I'm not sure. Is he shit? Is yeah. he shit? And you think, mate, we know how hard it is to do what he does. Yeah. He fucking smashes. Yeah. And, he can do things I can't do, but he, he's he, he's also doing a lot of things I don't want to do. But I still think he should be a comedian. I think he's still... You can't say someone isn't funny when they can make 10,000 people in a room laugh at once. You just can't. You can say you don't like them. Yeah. That's allowed. It's not your thing. I had a comment on, you know, that Victoria's Secret routine I've put out. It's doing quite well on Instagram, on IGTV. It's just slowly creeping up, getting more likes and getting comments from people who don't follow me which means it's being shown to other people. And someone last night just commented, this isn't funny. And I was like, it is though, isn't it? Because it's wall-to-wall laughter and applause. It's got 600 likes on Instagram and there's about 100 comments going, this is amazing. So objectively, it, it is funny. Like it is. What you mean is you don't like it and that's <laughs> fine. But obje- not subjectively, objectively, it's funny. Because yeah. enough people are enjoying it where you can't... Yeah. It's like when people watch football and as a player on the other team and you know you're talking to someone who doesn't involve their intellect or reason when talking about their fandom of their team. Yeah. So if you're a massive Liverpool fan, like, yeah, what do you think of uh, Skull's fucking cunt? You're like... I think pretty, Paul Skull's... Pretty good midfielder though. No, he's fucking shit. I hate him. You're I think like, he was all right. Right, listen... It's not the fucking point. What I'm trying to say is, 
Some people are like, no, I fucking hate him. You're I like, don't know if he'd have done as good a job as Mark Noble has if he'd have been at West Ham his uh, entire fucking career. stupidly mentioned fucking <laughs> Liverpool when I was trying to make a point and now Lid is literally backing up my point by going, no, you're wrong. Jordan Henderson I will think get a gin, a ginger and captain any Man United side uh, of all boring, time. boring, boring. Never mind. <laughs> stupidly, boringly made it about fault. football. Stupid. I forgot you can't talk about I football. I can't. So why? It's your fault for bringing it up. It's totally my fault. But people can't watch comedians that they don't like without having that visceral reaction of like, fuck, this is shit. And you're like, no, it's definitely not. Like, it's not, is it? Because you're not playing the XL Arena or wherever you're playing if you're shit, but you might not like it. That's all right. It's the same as how Sounds, I met your mother. Yeah. If, uh, how, how you met your mother's shit. It's, it's not too bad. People do watch it, but you're allowed to not like something. Yeah. But people don't, people don't do that. And weirdly with comedy, they get annoyed if people, like I've seen it in comedy clubs where someone's, you're ripping and someone doesn't like you. And when people around them are laughing, it actually enrages them even more. Like if, if they like, I don't like them. <laughs> and if they're hearing laughing, they're like, you can hear me go, why? I've seen knobheads at comedy clubs go, why are you laughing? Shit. And you're like, no yeah. mate, you just don't like me. I should go into a comedy club and being that much of a prick. Anyway, right. This person never had a bum hole. <laughs> All right, cool. Shout out to Paul Scholes. <laughs> Fucking hell. Who did have a bum hole? Did he have a bum hole? He did. Oh, you you did didn't literally use did. it though because he was always full of shit. <laughs> Very well done. Great bit of humour. <laughs> and that's what you can expect here at Have a Work Part. Uh, so, you were talking about it's Kira with the no bum hole. Yeah. Right. So Very important. Um, we had the same thing with a kid called Eric, a.k.a. Poo Bag. They called him Poo Bag. Good one, that. Did I'm he have a bag to pay in? Is that what it was? It, lit, it, it lacks imagination, that, doesn't it? If the kid's been born without a bum hole and he's got a colostomy bag, I know it's the first... Nah, it's, that's a, that's, I, I love a nickname that you, you can just see where it's come from straight away. He's got a bag. It's full of poo. He's poo bag. That's that's really is the two packet, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Like that's the lowest hanging fruit. If, you, if you've got a gig with a colostomy, there's, there must be a nickname one up from there. Like... That would be you'd be a bit more but inventive. School nicknames are always like that. It's always very basic. He's got a thigh in his eyelids, thigh eye. Oh, yeah, well that was quite creative on your account, wasn't it? No, I, I had a massive forehead. I just yeah. got called slaphead. Yeah. But everyone, but then one of the kids in the older years called me Moomin, and That's that funny and as fun. everyone was like, "Great shout!" You should never have told our listeners that. Right. The worst was when I got called Danger Mouse. That took off that. That really took off. And you know the worst thing is when you're getting shtick, right? When you're getting, because I had big ears, right? I got called Danger Mouse and I, I could see it. Danger Mouse? Oh. <laughs> Fuck hell. I would like one of our listeners to create some Danger Mouse artwork using Dan's face as soon as possible. Thank you very much. It's not going to be hard. Just stick my eyes on Danger Mouse and you've got it. <laughs> uh, one of you's made a joke about Amy being plumbed in. This was literally the case with Eric. He had a weird hole in his stomach and that was connected to a little bag he strapped to him. <laughs> his colostomy bag. But kids called him his poo bag, hence the nickname. Mate, Lewis, I can't believe you just explained the nickname poo bag about a kid with a colostomy bag. I'm just so glad he got in touch because you didn't fucking believe me the other day, did you? you no, didn't. I didn't. I thought you'd like weirdly remembered some poo bag related fucking childhood memory. Exactly. So he was pretty sound about it and used to crack on with the jokes and that. He used to do this thing where in class he'd let his bag off. He'd just unscrew the valve a bit and let out a, a rancid. He'd let out a smell and just sit there laughing because he was used to it. Because you never bothered about your own smell. That's like a fucking superpower, that. That's not just a fart. That's like a fucking shit goblin fart. Yeah, and it's, it's poo that's probably been sat there for a while, isn't it? Or, this is genius, when he was playing footy... If you were marking him, he'd just let his valve go a little bit, so he fucking stunk. How can you play fussy with a bag of shit on your back? Poo, mate, poo bags was a mean fucking winger, apparently. Not wing. You've got to be central, aren't you, if you've got a poo bag? He's got to be like a defensive midfielder. He can't be moving much. He's just the pivot, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's totally doing Lee Catamull a bit. Instead of breaking people's then legs. he can't slide just, tackle, because imagine just, ripping the back. You don't need to. You just let the poo bag off. Someone's coming to the ball, and they're like, ah, 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 ah. And they just give up playing football and I don't you hoof it. I, I, the logistics of playing footy with a bag of poo on your back, I just don't... Anyway, 
Thank you, Lewis. That was really thank, good. No, thank you, Lewis, from me. Because now he knows that I wasn't talking shit with the other day. The girl it, without a bum hole. And Carl. I've been trying to convince Carl that I was telling the truth about this. My best mate for about 10 fucking years. And he always bursts out laughing and calls me a knobhead. And I've now got corroborating evidence. Corroborating? I've been watching the good boys again. <laughs> Can we have a quick question? Because I want to know your answer on this. Talking about uh, you putting stuff out. Uh, Wayne... Let's do a question. Then we'll have an advert, and then we're going to be back with our second guest. Oh, we need to get some lunch in, have a little sit we down. Do. We've got, a, we've got we, our Just guest. so you know, guys, coming up in the second half today, we have got, who have we got? What's his name? Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes. We'll talk about his bum hole. We've got Justin I Morehouse. I bet you'd be dead nice to Paul Scholes if he was here. I wouldn't. I, I would. You would. I would. Of course I, you of would. Of course I would, but I'd also wind him up. I'd also say, I'd ask that question. I'd go, look, right, you spent your time at Manchester United. Obviously, very fortunate to do so. Do you think you would have been any better than Mark Noble if you spent your whole career at West Ham? I would absolutely do that. Of course I would. Yeah. I'd love to fucking do that. He's going to go, no, I think you're right, Adam. Good point. Isn't it? Of course, he's going to say yes. I'd, I'd just like to wind him up a bit. Mate, I'd fucking love to get to the point where we've got Zinedine, footballers on this. Zinedine Zidane was asked, what's it like to be the best footballer in the world? And he said, ask Paul Scholes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like that was a really good point until it all came out of my mouth and you went <laughs> in my head I was like well, honestly, why, why are we listening to Zinedine's as, as I was saying I was like you've got him on the ropes here Dan and you just literally I completely fucking collapsed <laughs> then you just went not bad <laughs> I was like oh yeah sure, sorry um, we've got Justin Moore I was coming up haven't we in the second half yeah we have if you don't know who Justin Moore is start of Phoenix Night start of Live at the Apollo going to be in the studio but first a question uh, Wayne Taylor Vickery says are you going to do a comedy special again? And Dan, have you got any plans to do a special? So oh. your special club comic was released right in the middle of the pandemic. Closing in on 50,000 views, which is amazing. So if you haven't checked that out, youtube.com slash Adam Rowe comedy. Or... I think you're done now though, aren't you? That'll be you. you do, you've peaked, haven't you? Yeah. So we'd probably leave it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how it works. I think I'm going to do- Wayne, club... it's not how it works. He's going to keep doing them. I think I'm going to do club comic two. I think I'm going to film, because I've still got about 40 minutes of stand-up that isn't on that special. Yeah. Um, And I'm going to film all of that at Hot Water Comedy Club as soon as I'm allowed to. I need to get gig fit again first, but I'll probably film it early next year, and then I'll start working on a full hour that we'll do in a theatre. And I'm planning to release uh, something similar. It's called Pub Comic. It's mm. it's kind of similar, but it's just a little... It's a little bit different. Chew in the corner of a Weatherspoons. It's, it's basically just some sort of cone. The Listen first, to me! The first 18 years of my career. <laughs> I'm just going to get a, a crew, a, a camera crew to follow me for a week of, of depressing midweek gigs in Swinton, Greater Manchester. Um, I would like to do something. I have got plans afoot. It's amazing how the game has changed since even 10 years ago when you were starting out. There were so many less comedians and you just, in your head you were like, you get really good on the circuit. You become a headliner. You go to Edinburgh. Someone goes, you're good for TV. And if it doesn't happen, you're fucked. And now there's so much more options in terms of self-promotion, developing your own stuff, like what you've done with Club Comic. And I'm still like, I think I'm better than most comics in the country, especially the ones my age and above. But compared to Adam, I'm just like so behind on the times. I've got I, I've got some stuff on the internet. I do need to look at either Clayton, some of my old stuff or the new stuff and doing it. But it's, it's, it's amazing how it? it's changed. Yeah, it's, I'd love to do it in like with Have a Word and do it properly. Well, I think we're going to do it. I think the next special I put together will be, we'll be using our equipment, our cameras, our, our forthcoming staff and stuff. And it will be a Have a Word production. Like... We, we've we spoke about this between ourselves and I think we've sort of hinted at it on the podcast before, but we don't intend for Have A Word now to stop at this podcast. We want it to grow and grow into a podcast network with other podcasts that are produced by us and we want or to be- made by us. Yeah. Like I, you know, you're, you've got other projects you want to do. Yeah. I've got other projects you want to do. Totally. And we want to be producing stand-up specials both for ourselves and giving our colleagues an opportunity to shoot stand-up specials where they haven't had the, either the opportunity or- the ingenuity to do it themselves. Um, th this is not the end for have a way get in the studio. This is very, very much the start. And all I want to do for the rest of my life is do stand up, film stand up specials, and do this podcast and maybe a couple of other little projects. I'm 
very content with my life as soon as I'm allowed to gig again. What about gay porn? Yeah, that's a past yeah, time, isn't it? We've got the equipment. I'm not touching your bumhole unless there's a you've would you the, rather involved. You've got. I don't think we could do it with each other, could we? No. No. Barry Dodds. Get Barry in for you. Oh, mate. Which comedian, if you had to do gay porn, would you do gay porn? Milo McCabe. Milo McCabe. He is beautiful, isn't he? We, we were gigging away. Um, and Either Milo McCabe or Quincy. Oh, big black guy. Is that because of the porn you've just been watching? He's got long hair. Right. We were gigging away, Milo, me, Kai Humphreys, brilliant comedians. We did an Alps trip and we got there and the Australian wife of the guy whose fucking chalet we were staying in was literally sat there over dinner. She'd gone quiet. She was. This is how good looking Milo is. We're all talking, we're all having a laugh. And then I noticed that she'd gone very quiet and she was just staring full of half a bottle of wine and in the middle of someone talking just went, you're very attractive, you know? You could be a male model. <laughs> Of in the middle of dinner, literally talking across her husband who was having a conversation, who was fucking paying us, feeding us, putting us up, went basically went, Jesus Christ, and fuck you right here. <laughs> and everyone just went, okay. And Milo's so good looking. He's obviously he wasn't shocked. He'd be like, Yeah, this happens every three days. I was like, I nearly went, Madam, put your flaps away. He can fucking dance as well, Milo, you know. Oh, I've been on a night out with Milo and he's all off. like death, death. Uh, oh, no. what's his thing you know I hate it I've been out with good looking comedians are always, always make me suspicious Jimmy McGee's good looking very good comedian very fucking good looking we went out drinking once after a gig in Cardiff out in the club everyone's having a great time he was sweating like a fucking summertime nonce and it really <laughs> it really made me happy I was like yes God yes you've made him funny interesting good looking but he sweats like a fucking pedo <laughs> I was so happy do you know how you can um, avoid sweating like a pedo you can keep your hair trimmed and you can do that with products from manscaped.com. Hello. What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped are the best male grooming products on the planet. They've only just launched in the UK. They've sent me and Dan a razor each. And I've got to say, proper top tier stuff. This is the best razor I've ever used. It's the first time I've ever shaved me balls and not snagged the bag. The good auntie. I get the little, you know, I get a little bit of like over the pubes tub and I nick that. I've just been using an old head trimmer. I've used this and you're like, oh, that's a slide. That's a glide. So you don't get that sting in the shower. Yeah, it's horrible. When you get like a, a little cut on your bag and then you get a bit of ball sweat seeping into the cut and you get sweaty sting. Mm, keep talking sexy, Adam. <laughs> That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. This is it. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created it's the new and improved lawnmower 3.0 and it's just been released in the uk it's smart as fuck this is their third generation trimmer it features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents and when i'm saying this is the best razor i've ever used i'm i'm not messing you know i know it's easy to say that when you're getting sponsored by a company but it, it's it's really 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 good it the battery is amazing it lasts for an hour and a half so you can shave for longer you, it's water resistant you can use it in the shower you don't have to be shaving stood over the toilet anymore it's sick one of the coolest features is the LED light. It illuminates the way as you shave along so you don't get any nasty nicks. And they've just got an upgraded 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor. The nicest bit, you get a load of kit when you get this sent to you. But the charging stand is charged by USB and it looks sleek as fuck. So you're not getting any whinging from your partner, your missus. It's going to sit in the bathroom. You're going to be proud of it. Look, don't take our word for it. If you're listening to this, watching it, pause the podcast yet. Go and order one for us. And they don't just sell razors. You can get all sorts of male grooming products from manscaped.com. And experience it for yourself. It, it's really, really good. Your balls will thank you. This is the important bit. Every listener of Have A Word gets 20% off. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD. That's WORD, W-O-R-D, at manscaped.com. And make sure you use that code, otherwise they won't know that we sent you. That's right, 20% off, free shipping all over the UK and in America, actually. But you can use the code word, word, that's W-O-R-D. We should have picked a different word, because code word, word, just sounds clunky, doesn't you, it? You're not thick. You get it, word. It's word. 
Can I Time shave? to shave those balls. Should I shave yours now? Adam, should I shave yours? We'll just do that now. We'll show you. Oh, don't. You're meant to flinch. <laughs> Pev. So welcome back to the Hoverword podcast with me, Adam Rowe, and my co-host, Dan Nightingale. How are you, Dan? Hi. Thanks for having me on, Adam. I'm really glad to be here on a platform to talk about the issues, transgender rights, and uh, sweaty... Why? What? Why? what? <laughs> it's 20 seconds in and you've already been a knobhead. <laughs> Hey, we're about 80 episodes in and I've been a knobhead on everyone. Oh, Jesus. Justin Morehouse is here! Justin Hi. Morehouse is here. <laughs> Talking about sweaty... <laughs> <laughs> it is warm though, isn't it? it Fucking is. it is warm. It's been warm today, but I've been in the car most of the day. And then... Uh, have you got aircon? Of course I have. <laughs> I think this is 1985. I think he's got a Ford Escort. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never talk about anything around Justin's money. He gets a bit like, shut the fuck up. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a working class lad done good. I am. Yeah. But that doesn't been... mean he can't have air con yeah. in his car. Who hasn't got air con in the car? Like, who hasn't? I don't know. My dad I has been on to... the dole for like 10 years and he's got air con in his car. <laughs> Sars. Have you got aircon in your car? Yeah, I really want to not have aircon just to sort of win this argument. I don't even know if I'd be winning. I'd be sweating constantly. Yeah. Mate, I would p fucking weep if I didn't have cruise control anymore. That's how yeah. Tory I've become recently. You know, um, now, whenever I uh, think about getting a new car, all I care about, all I care about is what it's like inside. Yeah. What if it's got CarPlay? It's got to have CarPlay now. Yeah, you're, you're I'm not messing about without having Spotify just there and Waze just there and everything just what's there. What's CarPlay? When you say CarPlay, is that like a fancy Bluetooth? Oh, hang on. Here we are. Do you not know what CarPlay is? This is, no. like, this, this is like a fucking Champions League footballer having a conversation <laughs> with a fucking League <laughs> One. You know, when Nike sends you the really nice football books, like, you don't have to get them from JJ Sports. <laughs> no, it, the Apple, Apple CarPlay. Right. So you plug it, so you get in your car, you plug it in or, or on the newer models now, it just does it on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, yeah. and uh, it mirrors your phone onto the car's display. <gasps> right. So it's got a series of apps on there. Oh, that's right. nice. No, yeah, yeah, I, have, I do know what you're talking about now. Yeah. yeah. But you haven't got it? No. Right. I've just bought, I've just bought a second-hand Kia Sportage. <laughs> it's got 2010 how long, how long? How old is it? It's 2017. I'm, I'm sure it's got it on it, you just never found it. No, 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 the, the dash is not that fancy. Like, it, it's still got a CD player on it. Right. But, but 2017? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? That's but like your... 2017 is like your answer phone message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you get that before? Yeah, that joke. Like, have you heard his answer phone message? No. I haven't changed it. Goes, it. Uh, it goes... Well, he always can picks I... the phone up to you, Dan. <laughs> he always picks the phone up. Can I guess, can I guess what it is that makes yeah. it really 2017? Because he says it's 2017. Oh, oh he right. goes, I thought he was going to do a Brexit bit in his answer phone. <laughs> Leave me a message uh, and I'll try and 52% of me might get back to you. Hey. And he, no, he says, um, he says, it's, uh, he goes, uh, the person who, and he, got, he cuts in then and goes, sorry, uh, it's 2017. Who's leaving a message anyway? Oh, you've dated I, your answer say, phone I message. I say, text me, it's 2017, as if I'm listening to your answer phone message. Oh, it's like talking to the past, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. I recorded it in 2017, and I haven't felt the need to go back and do a new no. one. I only got a smartphone in 2015. My daughter's answer phone message, she just goes, hi, it's my name, because I'm not going to tell you her name. She goes, hi, it's my name, uh, leave me a message. I'm not going to ring you back. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> And every time I hear it, I'm like, you're not getting any pocket money. <laughs> you're fucking there. Oh, shit. I'll just yeah. shout up the stairs. Do you, do you leave voice messages generally? Um, Not really. Just for, for work stuff, I would do. But I'm a massive advocate, right? This is one of my things. Is like, I'm a big believer in mirror the method of communication. Mm. Right. These pricks. I started doing that with you and it drives Jay mad because you're a voice note cunt, aren't you? You, yeah. you love a voice note. Oh, I like his voice notes. I like communicating like that. I like that. I like it. Yeah. But my missus yeah. hates it because you're the only person I do it with. Everyone else, I'm a text. Everyone else in my life. But then every now and then, she'll just be in the house. She knows I'm not on the phone and I'll just be like, hey, mate. You're know, like, yeah. So this, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, you just text them. Will you just fucking text them? I don't need to hear everything you're fucking saying. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that yeah. at the start of this podcast, Jay, I was one of Jade's favourite Northwest comedians that worked yeah. with Adam. I don't think I am anymore. No, I no. think there's been an, but I think it's efficient. You press your little microphone button. Yeah. You're basically leaving. You're having a phone call 
You're basically having a phone call in your own time. In your own time. Yeah. You've got a little bit of it's not like it's like tennis where you can have a little think about yeah, it. Yeah, it's nice. It's fucking beautiful. You do voice notes though, like like a kid writes a book report. You like summarize it all. <laughs> you like, does, he does. So in conclusion, <laughs> he'll say often, yeah. He does. But anyway, I, this is how this is how much podcasting I've been doing. I finish a WhatsApp going, going uh, we've got a patron, uh, yeah. patron.com slash have a word pod. So Follow us online. Of, what I was saying is that, so I'm a big believer and I'm an advocate for the meth, mirror the method of communication. Somebody texts you, text them back. Have you, te- have you ever texted somebody and they bring you straight back? Well, it's not that urgent, know. mate. If I, the only ring me back if I say ring me because I'm bleeding. Yeah, yeah. That's that. Essentially, you're. It's, if you do that, what you're doing is going. I don't care. I just want to speak to you. Yeah. Like, I'm in the doctor's waiting room. The that's o- why I'm texting you, prick. The only exception is if you're driving. It's important. Yeah, but with Apple CarPlay, <laughs> you, you can reply to the text message. <laughs> text. You can reply with a, a text message. Justin driving around in his fucking Hummer. Just all beige leather, like, yeah. uh, phone whoever tried to WhatsApp me. I don't drive. Oh, Somebody's no, you can drive. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't have a Hummer. I've got a Mini. You just see me I know, up. I've got beautiful. a little Mini. Yeah. It's very nice. Really nice. I think that is very considerate communication. Mm. I'm going to throw this out there now. If you use Facebook Messenger too much, mm. you're pissing me off. It's mm. a bit nonsense. Yeah. I don't, I don't have look. my notifications on on Facebook no. Messenger. I, I check it like once every three days and there'll be messages. The only people I Facebook message are people I haven't got the number yet for. Oh, it's like, it should really be like relatives that you don't give a shit about. Like yeah. if, you're, if you're anti messages, you're like, oh, I forgive you because you don't know what you're doing. I've got a mate who sometimes sends a WhatsApp Sometimes rings, sometimes yeah. text, and you can't and sometimes remember. Facebook messenger. You're like, this is fucking weird. Pick somebody, up. somebody needs to get an app which gathers all your messages and puts them in one place. Justin, it's just like your car, isn't it? You've been spoiled by this car. Yeah. Like, I just get in and it knows everything. Yeah. I just want one app that just. It's, yeah, sometimes I'm like, I'm going right. I know that Dan asked me to do this thing, and you know how did he? Is it? No, it's not on WhatsApp. It's not on Facebook Messenger. It's not on text. Did he email me? <laughs> and you're trying to find the actual letter. Yeah. My God, no. he sent oh, an actual letter. Instagram note. You know, uh, like, who's messaging on Instagram? Instagram messages are to tell someone you like the story. They that's just, it. That, and that, that is it. Yeah. I'm bad with phone calls. I've, I think I've mentioned this before. I, on the pod, I get, like, anxious on the phone. I hate mm. being on the phone. I need, like, uh, unless it's really important and quick and I can deal with that. But, like, if I've got, like, a phone call with my agents and we've got the same agents... They, are, they know they have to give me a day. I'm ringing you tomorrow about this. Because if I pick a, an important phone call up, I just... Oh, your last, red's not in it. No, I like, last week when I had to cancel that Virgin contract and sort my dad's sky out, that day on the phone, at the end of it, like, I nearly just downed a bottle of whiskey just to get myself I have literally it. just remembered a phone call from a few, few weeks ago when we were planning the studio, and we'd been doing WhatsApp messages, and then I rang you, <laughs> and you were like... What do you want? <laughs> and I was like, oh, it must be, something must be going on with Jade. And now I realise it was like, you can't, why are you ringing? I was like, this is more efficient. Well, he's a lot younger, get- he's a lot younger than us. And that, they, they don't, they, we grew up ringing people. They grew up messaging people. Yeah. My mate Chloe from The Frog is 24. Yeah. We did, we did a podcast together, tried to get that off the ground and we've become quite good mates. And she has had to tune in to me ringing her because I'll do a few messages and go, oh, fuck, I want to find out how you're doing and ring. And the first couple of times I did it, she answered the phone laughing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's like, hello. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you're all right. She's like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm ringing you. You can ring me if phone. you text me to let me know you're going to ring me. Oh, yeah. But you're that's you being a bit weird about it. Yeah. As much as I love I, you, I that reckon, is a bit weird. I re- we'll put this out as a poll on the Twitter. I reckon most people under the age of 35 will agree with me. You better say, you better let me know when you're ringing me. Yeah, you, you sound like you do like it's an out of hours phone call. Then I get it. Yeah. If it's before nine a.m. and before after, what's the cutoff? Nine p.m. For then us, there better be a fucking family no, emergency. I think weekends we're allowed to ring until midnight. Comedians only a comic though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine ringing your best mate who's not a comic at ten yeah. past eleven. Like, you all right, mate? I'm driving yeah. back from fucking Leeds. Like, do, I don't give a shit. You know the worst calls I get. My brother, right, who's a bit younger than me, and he's not like me. He likes rugby, right? My brother <laughs> says it all. Says, says it, all. it all. Sums it up. And he'll get pissed on a Saturday afternoon at the rugby with the lads, and then he'll ring me at like six thirty, seven o'clock to like have a like 
you fuck, why don't you ever fucking ring me? Oh. Why don't you love me? Oh. Why are we not tight? I go, because you're the kind of bell end that rings me when I'm on my way to my start of my working week. Yeah. Do I'm, you know in, I mean? I'm in the dressing room of a comedy club. Yeah. And you're like, I just don't think you've been there for me enough. Yeah. I love you though, you know. I keep just getting your it. tickets to the rugby. Yeah. You never come with me. <laughs> he rings me like half six and I'll just go, I've not got time for this now. <laughs> well, because I'm on my way to work. Like if I rang you on a Tuesday morning at half six when you're in at seven, started telling you I loved you when I was pissed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cry for help, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, the other rules is that the other people that are freaky as comics, like you can ring your mates on a Saturday night and yeah. you know if you hear the road, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. As soon as you don't hear the road, you're like, oh shit, you're home already. Yeah, or you've yeah, got a night yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, sorry, mate. But uh, my mates who are dads now, yeah. Any weekday morning, if I'm in the mood for a chat at 20 past seven, I don't even have to preamble. Yeah. I'll ring. And if you rang, and if I rang you at 20 past seven and woke you, that could be the end of this podcast. Yeah. If I ring my mates, coffee? Ben and Matt, they're like, you're all right, mate. How are you doing? They're, in, they're an hour in, co yeah. full of coffee. It's a great chat time to oh, chat. Yes. I don't mind a chat in the car when I don't have to hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hang I'm on. in the car. This isn't anxiety. It's just laziness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's Are something else my generation do. We just say we're mentally ill when really we're just in a mood. <laughs> yeah, but Fucking, I did not appreciate my generation there, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he lumped you in with e each other as if no, like he's like younger that. than us. I'd so take that. I'm taking it, yeah. I'd yeah. take that. You I'm, are young. Yeah. How old are you? 50. 15. Oh, hang on. We're three different generations here. Wow. How old are you? I'm 39. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. Same one. i tell you what's funny, though. <laughs> in comedy. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I was just not, in comedy. <laughs> we've talked about this before. How <coughs> age just goes out of the window. It's who you start with. It's, no, yeah. but yeah, but that's almost like a soft spot. Yeah. But really, who you can be proper mates with and who you sound with and who you respect. It's all about <laughs> what you can do in a, a, a gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you're 50. I'm 40, he's near, He's not even 30, but if you can smash and you can close and you are shit up, you're like, yeah, yeah you're all right. <laughs> yeah. You could be 60 and shit, and I'd be like, this guy's a fucking shit. I was talking to somebody the other day about uh, comedians, and um, I was talking to somebody who's not a comedian about somebody, um, somebody, yeah. Okay, good. I like we're, not, we're pulling punches. Yeah, and uh, no, no, it's that phrase where they go, uh, you know, uh, have you seen Barry Chuckles work? You go, yeah, you go, is he funny? And they go, he's a nice lad. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. brilliant. It's the biggest insult in comedy. Yeah. If you oh, if brilliant. you get asked if someone is he's good, all right, is he all right? What's he like? Yeah. He's a nice lad. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Um, and all the best comedians are cunts as well. Yeah, he's <laughs> dead sound. He's dead sound. And then yeah. it's the pause. And then <laughs> I'm not but, sure. Yeah, but, I won't book him. But he's all right for middles. Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh. I'd book him because he's good for the green room. Like he's yeah. good chat in the I'd green book room. Him, but I'd have to put him somewhere on the bill. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'd have to. You know, it's it. First after the break. That's yeah. the thing, isn't it? We've said you know co comedy has always been like this. It doesn't matter who you know when you're starting out. Doesn't matter what connections you've got. As soon as you're on that stage, doesn't matter if you're, I mean, you could be talking about the industry and about breaks and like TV opportunities and all. We're not talking about that. In terms of the respect of other comics and an audience, once you walk on, if you are good and everyone's laughing, that's it. You, you, it's it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Actually, my father um, knows Don from the comedy store, so I'm actually getting paid weekend work. You're fucking not. No. <laughs> Even Don from the comedy store wouldn't put his son on if he was shit. No. No, and that's and, a beautiful thing. There is a meritocracy to it. There is a kind of, you know, and, and some, you know, talking to break, some people get lucky, some people don't get lucky. Some people get chances and take them, some people don't. But you're right, the acid test, you can't fool an audience. No. So you can't fool comedians and you can't fool owners. Some, you, you, can, you can get four runs off the bat without meaning to. Sometimes, yeah. can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you can get a generous, you can't consistently fool audiences is the right oh, thing, yeah. isn't it? No, That's no. it. You can you can have a good gig with a bad set and as a bad comic, and that audience might just be in a great mood. Maybe the comp is set it up perfectly. Yeah, that guy can't do six weekends in a row of no. that. Oh no! And that's awful when you're at a new comedy night yeah. and you see the light in their eyes and you're like, I know that light. I've had yeah. that light, and they're like, fucking yes. Yeah. Two years of dying on my hole, but I. 
fucking done it. And I it was just, it. just it's look, something. Yeah. It was just something in the air where they were on the bill and they think they've got it. Yeah. And then you see them three weeks later. The and they're best like, thing ah, is when what happened? someone who's been smashing like King Gongo beat the frog. You know, like a new act night where the audience are there knowing it's new act or hot water on a Sunday. New act night. Be dead supportive, guys. Could be the first gig. And someone smashes it six weeks in a row. And then they get like... They get to do like a Thursday middle or like an open spot on a Friday. I remember my first open spot at Jonglers in Leeds and I'd been doing well at open mic nights for six months to like a year or whatever and just absolutely stunk the place out. And it's like when... I heard about that. <laughs> I'm sure you did. It's like when Theo Walcott went to the World Cup when he was 16 because yeah, he'd yeah. been smashing it in the underage and he's like, I'm a fucking World Cup player. And they were like, you're not getting on the fucking pitch, <laughs> yeah. you kid. You're going to be a company on the coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's nice lad, Theo Walcott. <laughs> yeah, he re he's he's a really, nice lad. really nice yeah. lad. But his generation, yeah, <laughs> all the other players, like, what the fuck are you on about? It is though. That's a, that is the good thing about. It. It's not like music, because it, because we are, uh, you know, and we, I th me and you talked about this on the phone the other day. It's been very interesting in lockdown for a bunch of people that are supposed to live on their wits, be self starters, be adaptable. How many have crumbled? Yeah. yeah. How many have just... Get a job, mate. You know, you've got a family. You've got to do this. You've got to do something. And I, and I, and I, I, I hear the whiny sort of love notes to comedy going, oh, I just need... I need to gig. I just need it. It's my life. It's my yeah, lifeblood. And you're like, if comedy was free though, <laughs> uh, would you do it five nights a week? Yeah, exactly. It's not. You, you no. want to earn money from standing up and talking. No, I don't want to deliver for DPD. I get it. It's not. That's not an easy gig. That's a hard shift. Yeah. What What did you think about people like doing stand up in their house? Uh, I did a couple myself. I, I, I mean, depends really on how good it and how well it's set up. I did Jason Manford's one, mm. and that was great. That yeah. was really good because he had six or seven people and I'd got, and I just did bangers. I just knew what I was doing and I could see them laughing. I didn't have to hear them laughing and I kind of just get, I knew where the rhythm was of that. Um, I did a first week of lockdown. I did a sort of like corporate kind of gig on Zoom. <laughs> a corporate on Zoom? <laughs> yeah. You're the f captain corporate. If fucking Will goes into lockdown and he still gets a fucking private Me and gig. Adam Bloom. Yeah. In his corporate and Adam. Imagine watching Adam Bloom do his set to silence. Oh my god! Yeah, that's not Adam Bloom. If you've never heard of him, is he? He's a bit of a legend in British comedy. Yeah. I saw him on something like Edinburgh uh, 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 Stars of Edinburgh, like about yeah. when I was at uni. Edinburgh like, Nights, I think it was Edinburgh, Edinburgh and Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Edinburgh is it something Beyond like that? On TV, and he yeah. was a young lad with peroxide blonde hair, and his energy was incredible. And he's and still he got is, energy, but he's, he's 20 <laughs> years older and he's got that energy. And he's also, he's an incredible joke writer. He's like all, it's like an, it's like a panic attack with yeah. punchlines, isn't it? Yeah. So imagine that. And he's also, silence. he's also quite, um, he's not like very domineering or he's still quite vulnerable, isn't he? Like, yeah. but he does not do well when like he dissects every joke if it's not what it wants yeah, him to yeah. be. He's very like mental and controlling like that. I can only imagine without the audio what yeah. the fuck that sounds like. So we like. had to do this thing where they made it a little bit taskmastery. So the first thing they did, we had to like go into our kitchen and uh, create a picture of the boss using <laughs> kitchen stuff and film that the day before. So they showed that. That was quite nice. Fuck. What? what? But then there was a bit where they interviewed oh. me, but in the kind of like that, that chat show way going, I believe you went to skiing once. And you know you do your you do your bit, Wait, so that right. be, be a cunt about it. Be like, no, nope. Adam, <laughs> Adam didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam had said, right? Adam had said, I could do a joke about anything. Throw a subject at me, I'll do a joke about it. Oh, These were all IT nerds. Oh god! So they were all going, all right then. What about the motherboard on the ES three nine four six? Anyway, give me another one. <laughs> it was oh, like, no. yeah. So that was tough. So I did that, and then Jason's was good. I've been doing a few quizzes and bingo games online and stuff, but That's, actual stand-up is weird. Yeah, it's, stand-up requires an audience for me. Yeah. I, we, we said it on the pod, like, I, I, I take my hat off to any comedian trying to diversify and trying to make it work somehow. I get it, like, it's a fight-or-flight situation, but it was just never for me. I tried one at, yeah. at Hot Water on yeah, stage. I did, I did one at Hot Water, and it was all right, because it set yeah. up nice, and there was a four or five on the front row, and that was okay. We didn't have a front row yeah. because it was the, basically there was a gig meant to happen in the Isle of Man. Yeah. 
yeah. and they were like, we still want the gig, will you do it remotely? Yeah. So we were just live streamed into the pub where yeah. they were all sat I love this the story. show. Do you know about this? No. And at one point, there was, so they so was on funny. a big screen. Like they were Oh, yeah, the, the Isle of Man bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yo, yours. I thought you was doing it. And they got no, in touch no, with just one. They right. got in touch with Binti to say, tell the compare to tell people to stop talking while <laughs> the <laughs> <bar. laughs> Jesus Christ. What's next? Like, Binti had to tell him to go, would somebody move a Vox on <laughs> <Cavalier?" laughs> When you're talking about Bloom saying he can do a joke about anything, you remind me of this lad. I've, I tell this story about once a year when it comes up. There was a lad at Rawhide Raw, which was essentially their version of Beat the Frog. The, yeah. new newest, the newest of the new. Yeah, new act, gong show in Liverpool. And that, it's one of the places I started out. And there was a lad doing impressions. And he's like, I've got hundreds of impressions. Shout an impression out and I'll do it. So someone was like, Robert De Niro, which is the most... Common yeah, yeah. comedian impression. Top twenty-five. You just, you just yeah. do that and like. It's good that. Oh God, yeah, yeah. good isn't it? Yeah. Do the voice as well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Like you look like he's having a stroke or coming. Justin, if- towards the end of this episode, if you want to set Adam some impression challenges, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have a little, just muse on that. He is very good. I'll do the now. At, no, no, no. At two. Yeah. <laughs> I have to fight them. He's got two. <laughs> Maybe three. Two and a half. But he literally was like, I'll do any impression. And people were shouting him out to him and he just couldn't do it. And he kept going, no one wants to hear that one. And he, and he, he, got, he got about 12 heckles before he went, right, Gary Barlow. <laughs> just did one no one had asked for. No. Weird impressions, aren't they? Weird. I'm quite good at them when I when I put some effort in. But they're weird, aren't they? Oh, the comedy club. Hell. What? We're closing this with some impressions. I Who love can you, you do? Oh, no, we're not. Who can I do? Oh, <laughs> Give him some. <laughs> no, don't. Desmond Tutu. Oh, who's that? Oh, well, God. actually, <laughs> well, actually, is Mandela's pretty good, and I know that's not the same person, but it's you know near enough. What do I say when I do the Desmond <laughs> Mandela? I want to live in a world. Oh yeah, <laughs> Ma- no, Mike, no. I, c- I can do an impression of you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my impression of you doing the impression of Desmond oh. Mandela. Oh no, it's pressure now. Oh, he just did his eyes like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he gets really into the character. <laughs> his eyes roll. <laughs> Her, when you come back here, yeah. I want to live in a wild, wild man. Ah! Wild man. <laughs> what, what's happened? What? Fucking what's happened to Nelson? I was laughing because of you. Right, come on, be serious. Not just comedy, this podcast. <sighs> Take a breath. Go on, do that, do that voice. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. You do the impression of me doing it. I want to live in a wild, wild man and a wild man can live together. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Chinese. <laughs> it's gone Chinese, that. I want to live in a world where I'm at. It's a bit like, you know, it's a bit like um, <laughs> Phil Nickel when he does the only get Eskimo. And he goes, and the adults from Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Look, I think that one's quite good. What else have I done? B- Bane? Oh, it was like darkness is a lie. <laughs> That sounds a little bit like know. Nelson Mandela. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the heat. Yeah. But you fucking... Uh, Christopher Walken. Oh no! Yeah, go on. Let's oh, do he's off piece now. A, this is this is a big one. Now, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Can do Nessa from Gavin and Oh Stacey? no, he can't. Go on, <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, <laughs> one word impression. He's a one <laughs> one syllable. To be fair, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh. Oh, Justin, give us a break, will you? I'm trying my best over here. Uh, it, have you seen? <laughs> have you seen the? You'll edit this bit, won't ha, you? No, this is the best bit. The, the Nutty Professor. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Right. When Eddie Murphy plays the mum of the family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is good. This is his fucking closer. <laughs> it's not even. Come on. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> no, it's good. It is pretty good. <sighs> One Can, of the, can uh, you do any? Uh, when I was little, I used to do uh, two impressions, and uh, my mum would come back from the pub and bring people round and get me to come downstairs and do them. First gig. Stand on the table and do them. Oh my God. What way are they? In my pyjamas. <laughs> it's borderline child abuse, but yeah. it's also the start of a successful Both career. of them were from the north of Ireland, but they were from <laughs> dev- very different ends of the, not the political spectrum, but the entertainment spectrum. Okay. So the first one I did was the uh, father of a colleague of ours. <laughs> Roy Walker. No. Oh, uh, Jimmy, Cricket. Jimmy Cricket Moulds his dad a, I got a letter from my mother <laughs> Come here and there's more Okay I remember you I've had a guest 
I've had my teeth taken out in a gas fire put in. You'll not recognise the house when you come home because we've moved. That's but nice. I to, when I was That's little, it was all right. How did you make the first bit about a letter sound like something to do with the troubles then? I got a letter from you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it sounded and like a really effeminate do. IRA. Like. Was Roy, was, uh, was Reverend Ian Paisley. <laughs> Northern Ireland will never succumb to the violence of the IRA. Why can you only do Northern Irish impressions? I don't know. It's not very good. What Fuck kind of kid can do an Ian Paisley impression? <laughs> the kind of kid, the kind of kid that, the kind of kid that was obsessed with the news, obsessed with the news when I was a kid. I, I of a period between 1978 and 1985. I can tell you about uh, the Yorkshire Ripper. I can tell you about Jeffrey Bamba. I was a paper boy and I used to read all the papers. I loved the news when I was a kid. I, 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 I want to see your fucking parents mate to the pub. Oh, come, come back, back to ours. I just him, right? He does a great Ian Paisley. If you want to know first, anything yeah. about the rapes in Yorkshire, he's yeah. fucking well up on it, mate. I, I would honestly, I know and there's I no footage. And I love light entertainment, and I love light entertainment as well. There's no, all right. Just yeah. like, no, no, I did it for a reason. A I would sentiment. love to see a kid on a coffee table at fucking 10 p.m. on a night. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll tell in you the about pajamas. the rapes on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Never! Never! <laughs> never! And all the parents go, ah, you know, give me some money. It's <laughs> a, a bit. fringe gig. Yeah. <laughs> Bucket speech. It is, it's free to get out, and it's not free to get <laughs> out. Get down. That's what he's shouting downstairs. Fucking yeah, yeah. hell. So I used to, that's the two impressions oh. I used to do. Fucking political satire from and a six more. year old. Come here. And Come there's here. more. And there's more. How yeah. old were you? Like six? Uh, no, a bit old, about 15, 16. Oh, okay. No, I, was, uh, I was probably about 10, 11, 12, something like that. Oh, right, okay. Oh, that's less weird than a five-year-old yeah, doing it. just before, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 10. J uh, Jimmy Cricket is our friend, Kate Mulgrew, who's a brilliant comedian. It's her dad. Yeah, yeah. And it's... It's, he's like exactly how he was on TV. I don't remember him from TV. TV right, don't Just you? about. But obviously, you, I've seen the clips and everything. Yeah. And I think my... my I remember... So I think... He might have been in a panto I was at when I was really young. Yeah. And we've met him. I've met him as an adult. He's one of the, the nicest. The nicest. Like, he's the nicest guy, but he's always doing his stuff. Yeah, like always he's a, doing a He's bit. a gag guy. Yeah. And he did a speech at Katie and Lee's wedding as a father of the bride. He just did 20 minutes. Yeah. I am not joking. <laughs> everyone's there at the fucking reception and everyone's doing, there's been a speech from someone else and now- Damien Far Larkin was there, Far he wasn't invented. <laughs> yeah, really. Right. Mate. We had a mate just turn Not up true. and go, oh yeah. yeah. What, we had a chair up at the table. We had, we had a friend from comedy just That's turn so up and go, well, you said uh, 6 p.m. and I'm here because he's on yeah. the spectrum. Because the idea was that we all went to watch the wedding and then they said, uh, you know, selected guests were all dayers, but the majority of people- Go off and get something to eat, and then we'll see you at the evening reception. He just didn't play that. He game. just turned up. She had to ask him to leave her own wedding. Oh, it's so funny. That's so funny. Her dad yeah. did. He's got no social skills, Damien. I no. remember, we, you know, every year. <laughs> Poor old Larkin's getting a slamming. No, I like he, he's funny, but he's, <laughs> he's a nice lad. <laughs> <laughs> he came on the Liverpool Comedy Christmas Night House. We we do that every year, and a couple of years when ago. When do you do it? Where do we do it? No, when? Uh, Christmas. Just before after Christmas before or, or January, oh, right. depending on the, the... And he came, Rob Thomas has organised it. We went to this uh, place called Patterson's in Liverpool, which is like a, a, fat, a hipster KFC, fried chicken and shit. And this... <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> hipster fried chicken? Yeah, so like... Nice. All right. it's, it's just KFC, but it's six quid more expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this girl, he'd arrived, like, we'd all, all ordered. And she came over and was like, uh, right, what you want? He was like, I'll have uh, the, the chicken strips with chips. And she was like, right... For your chips, you just want normal chips, curly fries, curly fries with sour cream on, and he just handed her the menu, didn't look at it, and went, I don't want any nonsense. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Do you know sometimes when you watch someone- you know, talk, about, uh, talk about weddings and that. And Alfie Joey's wedding, he's doing a speech at his own wedding, and he went, the wife has said that I'm not allowed to sing at, uh, because I don't, she don't want me to sing at the wedding, and he loves to perform. And he went, but I'm only going to get married once, so- and he started singing, and he started singing something like, fly me to the moon, or something like that. Halfway through, he goes, ladies and gentlemen, on saxophone, Mr. Jimmy Cricket. And Jimmy Cricket came out from behind the curtain playing the saxophone. <laughs> the it was amazing. <laughs> I love stuff like that. I love it, like, with, with, I mean, Damien Larkin being on the spectrum is entertaining, but just comedians just not being able to switch it off. Yeah. Like, if... 
if you give us something that sort of looks like a gig, you find yourself like rising to the challenge. Like I've been at like a kid's birthday party, my niece's birthday party. And I've been like sat on a step and everyone's been sat around and then they're like, oh, Dan's a comedian. And I can feel the yeah. sort of like, you've got to justify that you're a comedian. And that's like, like, I'm like, oh, I'm doing, I feel like I'm going for laughs here. Your like, it, moves and, and then in your head, you're like, shut up, Dan, don't be a fucking gig whore. But you're like, <laughs> what's this my, guy uh, doing? My mother-in-law and father-in-law are ballroom dancers. And uh, they, t- they they were very good. And they, they won like national seniors and they were decent at it. Yeah. And that every year or so, they put on a show and, them and all their mates who dance, they put on a big show and loads of people come and they raise thousands for um, uh, Christie's for the cancer hospital and they're good, good people. They work really hard. They make all the costumes. It's a, it's a labor of love. Okay. And they ask me like, would you compare? And every year I go, I don't want, cause like I'm a, you know, and all that. And eventually you do because that's the right thing to do. And when I do it, I love it, right? And it's really, really nice. And it's a good skill to get because there's little kids there and there's old people. It's a nice comparing thing. But there was one, you know, when you do that thing where you get something off the cuff and you think, that's a great bit. You know, it's a great bit. I did a bit there that I'll never be able to use. And it's one of my favourite jokes I've ever come up with impromptu. They did the Moulin Rouge ensemble, all these 65-year-old women. Nah, 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 showing the knickers and everything. <laughs> and I went back and I went, there you go. Just to prove the old saying, just because you can, can, doesn't mean you should, should. <laughs> <laughs> so hard not to, it's so hard not to, and it? You've got that instinct of yeah, like, yeah. just make it funny, just make it funny. It's awkward in a green room sometimes though, isn't it? When you, when you just, as comics, just having like comic banter, green room chat, talk and just getting it out. Yeah. And then a comic decides... Freddie's bad for that. I don't know we slag him sometimes, but he, he does it all the time. You'll be having a good little chat and he's silent for like two and a half minutes just listening. And then you just hear him go, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's that tone. And I go, ah, it, shut when, up. When he gets an analogy wrong, he <laughs> fucking crashes it into the ground. And you're like, mate, that was not necessary. <laughs> That's like a swan going into a river, but with its wings behind its head. <laughs> He did a bit of that, Freddy. I, I love it. Freddy. He did it. We've been playing a lot of poker online, and he's been doing a little bit of that because we're on the Zoom chat. Like, and Jamie, 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 Jamie Hutchinson will just go, Freddy, you try to do a bit. And he goes, uh, yeah. Well, uh. Yeah, but Freddy's socially aware enough to know that it's not allowed, so he will pipe down. Yeah. Damien Larkin is so on the spectrum. Not only does he turn up at weddings and try and get free meals when he's definitely been told not to, he does that, trying to, he tries to compare. He, we've been on one of those Chris, Christmas comedy nights out with comedians in Manchester. There's 15 professional comedians sat around a table and you have to tell him to sit down because he's up to fucking comparing. Like with his drink in one hand, pointing at the others like, he's headlining. And you're like, uh. mate, you're not even a comedian. I love you. <laughs> but you're a promoter that compares his own gigs. You're in front of 14 fucking murderers. Yeah. And you're going, oh, this is my charm. Is this on? <laughs> no. We're in a you know, fucking bar. the worst bar. thing in the green room is the mate, somebody's mate coming sitting in and thinking that they have to try and be funny. Oh, it's the oh. worst thing. Muggles. Yeah. Adam calls them muggles. Yeah, muggles. When, when, they, when they bring a muggle into the green room. At Christmas, someone we've mentioned on our podcast before, I'm, I won't name them because I don't want the person, if they ever listen to be embarrassed or anything, but someone at Christmas brought their old friend who they used to be in a band with and he was drunk when they arrived and he was in the green room he stayed to play poker with us and it was just a constant attempt at being funny <sighs> to five comedians and a comedy club owner and he kept going out for a drink or a ciggy like every two minutes so it was disrupting the game of poker oh i'm going for another drink just deal me out of this one or put me put me blind in or whatever and we're like Ugh. And in the end, he was just sat there like, I'm really, really sorry. I was like, what? And then for the rest of the Christmas run, we're like, your dad coming tonight? You're bringing your dad again? You're bringing his dad? No. Oh, but it was, he acted it was, like a dad. It was your dad. Your yeah. dad. It was his dad. Do you know what a lot of that, though, is it's pressure because they feel like, and with, like, most comedian, most green rooms are not wisecracking, hey, you know, it's, sometimes it can be fun, you know. Yeah, a lot yeah, of the time, yeah. it's dull as fuck, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Most of the time, I'll just sit and listen to me. I like to listen and then pipe up. No, you're a right piss taker in a dressing room, you are. I'm 
You are. Yeah, you she's are. Fu- you are, Justin. You're not. I'm not saying you're loud or anything. But if any, you are. Fu- you're fun in a dressing room. You're not passive aggressive. You're not a cunt about it. Do you know what but he done to me? The first you're time always I having him. a little needle, mate. We rip. We basically roasted Freddie Quinn the last time we saw him. He turned. I know it wasn't a dressing room, but it was. A, it was virtually a dressing room. I was wearing shorts, an orange hoodie, oh. cycling shorts. I looked a bell end, <laughs> and you went, "What the fuck are you wearing?" And then Freddie turned up looking like a fucking gypsy <laughs> with shit on his shoes. And I'm not joking. You roasted him for fucking five minutes straight. And I was having such a good time. And Freddie was there going, oh, well, this is like when a swan comes out of a muddy pool. You absolutely, so you don't know. be like, I just sit there and I listen. I'm, I'm just a people, but oh, you're right. pretty good. I'll tell you this right now. Do you remember the first time we gigged together? No. Manchester Comedy Store, right? Mm-hmm. This is like 2011 or 12. <laughs> It was only the second club outside of Hot Water, obviously, they built from whatever. But I'd done one open spot at Jonglers, which went horribly wrong. And this was the second club I'd got into as like a Thursday 10 minute tryout. John Warburton was on, and he was still in the green room with us. And you were comparing. And I can't remember who else, who the attack on, but it was a Thursday night. I had like five minutes. And the only other gig I'd done. As I say, was Jonglers and Kane Brown, who is on our soundboard, and he'll come on someday. And it, not his fault, but he was comparing Jonglers, and he'd gone on and gone right. Your next act's a, a, a new act, and um, <laughs> no, I'm doing your voice for Kane Brown. Your next act's a new act. Come all the way from Liverpool, and a group of Manx booed me because they were there on a stag doing yeah, leads. Yeah, yeah. I went on and had one of the worst gigs I've ever had. So I come up to you in Manchester and I went to you. I just you're right. He was like, yeah, yeah. How, how you doing? I was like, just wondering if you'll do me a favour. Uh, you went, yeah, what is it? And I went, well, when you introduced me, will you just not mention, A, that I'm from Liverpool, <laughs> or B, that I'm a new act, because um, I've had a bad experience with it. And you, to make John Warburton laugh, went, right, listen, son, I'm the compere of the comedy store. You don't fucking tell me how to host this gig. <laughs> and didn't break eye contact with me at all. Like, and second of all, no, I won't tell him you knew, because that's not the fucking done thing, is it? And he walked away. And then John Warburton, after you'd left, burst out laughing. I was like, he's only taking the piss, you know. And I'm this shaking like a shitting dog, new act scouting. And how did I bring you on? What did I do? I can't remember. I didn't. I, I never say new at me when I bring a new act on. No, you no, you're not. I back I'm, announce it. I back announce well, it. You can't say you're not a fucking piss taker. Yeah, in a you are room, a bit of a piss taker, just <laughs> You didn't know that about me. Who, you come on, <laughs> come on. And this is like we. I think all good comics like a bit of piss day. But there are some dressing. Room, I see some bills on the confirmation. Yeah. If I see certain names, I'm like, this is gonna be fucking brutal. You do not want to turn up last, because if Justin Morehouse. Mick Ferry, uh, why Matt, together? Matt Reed. I, I see some names. I'm like, oh my God, don't be the last dickhead who turns up. <laughs> Danny Mac, he sits there like, <laughs> he's like a fucking praying mantis in like <laughs> Nike Air Max. Oh my God. It, and you walk in and you literally just before they open, open the door, you're like, breathe in, you'll be fine. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that's, yeah, but and it's fun. But you it's only fun. do that with people you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. You only do that with but people it, you like. It's still fun, and but there is a moment. And take it. And you want it back as well. I love it when people take the piss out of me. I just like to go like that. All right, you've got me. Yeah, I like it. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, laugh it off. I tell yeah. you what I hate is the people like, hey, mate, how you doing? You're right. Yeah. Brilliant. I think you're going to be great. And you know, they're just one of them cunts that slags everyone off. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather, it's always the people who take the piss and have a joke and like yeah. rip you in front of your face who are sound. It's those snidey fuckers who are like, I thought you were absolutely brilliant. Let me just finish this that, tweet real that was quick. Yeah. Top. That was t- that was yeah. just really great. Like you've done really well. Mm. There. You should be really happy with that. <laughs> you know, I mean, my favorite, really my favorite happy. thing to do is when somebody comes off after storming it, right? <laughs> they walk yeah. in, I go. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, out, they just go. What? I go. Next was time, it, was it? Was it? Was it out that? Unlucky. <laughs> un- 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 <laughs> you get them. You get them next time. Oh, the worst part is when somebody comes off after rinsing it, and you go, "That was brilliant." And they go, oh, "It was all right." No, mate. Take no, the compliment. Yeah. That, your face morphed into Danny McLaughlin, mate. <laughs> <laughs> don't move it, me. Don't move it. Don't move it. Don't. It's done. Don't want the footy. Not like the don't footy anymore. Don't Guys, like comedy. Guys, what are we doing? I'm going to have to edit this out. <laughs> Why? Because no, you know what he's like. <laughs> I'm going to make it the fucking clip. Oh, don't. <laughs> He'll have his first period. He's not going to listen to this. <laughs> Doesn't even fucking retweet it when he promises he will. 
What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawaredpod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie, something like that T-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Weird live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawaredpod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast Every week on patreon.com slash have a word pod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash have a word pod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Richard Peel has sent us a would you rather. Oh, Richo. Oh, Peelo. Peelers. Peely. Dick Peel. Oh. Oh, yeah, Dick Peel. <laughs> oh, Richard. He's heard it before, but we've just discovered it. Uh, would you rather watch all your partner's previous sexual experiences or have them watch all of yours with the would you rathers? You can't go, fucking neither. That's not the point. You've got to engage. This is one of my strengths is I'd really ra- getting I'd, into these. I'd rather they watch mine. Really? Yeah. Oh, I have no interest in them mm. in watching anybody else touch anybody else that I want to touch. That, yeah. that cook holding thing. Oh, I just, I could not imagine that. It's very popular, the old cook old porn, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it just, it's, for me, it's just the weirdest thing that, what you're saying is, I am pathetic. See, I watch it sometimes, but I imagine I'm the guy fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That does not fucking surprise me. me. I, Adam's like, watching yeah, I've got you. Adam, yeah. you're never going to be the guy that gets asked to come round. I don't know, you know. Adam, Adam's got in his head. Like, boxes that might surprise you. I'm definitely the black guy that's just knocked on the front door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think cuckoo porn is one of those really no, weird like new it strains. It makes me feel sad. You know why? I the the actual you men are watching. Go, oh my god, that husband! How must he be feeling? I can completely disconnect to that because porn is so naff. And I and I do this when I'm watching films or period dramas. You know when they're like clearly doing something that's stressful, the scene. Yeah. And you're meant to be watching it going, oh my God, I can't believe it. There's like a fight in the fucking, the plaza. But all I think is, fuck me, I bet that was a really hot day's filming in that Spanish te- like square. Yeah. And I'm watching all the extras sweat. You, you know they're on the fifth take. And I do it with porn. Some bellend has to come in. They've got the male porn star, the female porn star, and the least important knobhead is the fat white dude who, the, Jeff, can you come in? Yeah, yeah, these are ready. They're prepped to go. Uh, Leon is ready to go. So it just is a matter of time. Yeah. So just look fat, fucking pathetic and sad. Oh, actually, you've nailed it. All right, on, on you go. Just pop yourself on the See, end I'm of the bed and look about tearful. Like where they've cast oh. them. I'm talking about like Snapchat cuckold porn. Like there's like... Snapchat porn where it says like across the screen like doesn't your girlfriend look good sucking my dick and I'm like yeah that's my video <laughs> oh uh, we're talking about the fully filmed like there's a guy in this there's in the scene and sometimes there's a guy with little glasses on going oh my. and they make them they make them they can tell the directors like Jeff right now really lean in and look at like wow that's a big dick and th- and they get him like. Oh, makes me feel sad. I know, but I feel sad for the dude who's playing the fact. So you're loser. saying you'd be quite happy, if, well, not quite happy, but your your partner seeing everything you've ever done sexually. Yeah, would, would I rather? that? That's what I would rather. Right. This is my problem. This sounds really arrogant. Mine would be a longer watch, and I don't think I could put Laura through that because I've been a bit of a uh, uh, little fucking dirtbag in my time. See, I think... I, I would be absolutely horrified, as Justin says, to watch Jade's show reel. It's good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Damien Larkin's in it. Like, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right. Is this on? He's got a big dick. He's headlining. But some of the, the nights I've had. Yeah. And some of the San Marino's. Right, we were talking about this. Your sexual history is a bit like England caps. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you start off with like an Albania away and like a San Marino where you knew you shouldn't have scored eight, but you did. And they were like, Lars, you've scored so many. I've let you and everything. You can score more if you like. You know, like that, it's it's a bit grim. I I think if you could get your head around watching your, your partner get banged, if you could get your head around that, it wouldn't end the relationship. I think Laura would be half an hour into that fucking epic and be like, <laughs> you did that, you fucking disgusting. Yeah, yeah, Why see, that's that? exactly Are there what things that you have never done with Laura that you've done with other people? 
<laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, the answer's yes. Yeah, because you'd just say no, wouldn't you? Do you know this all the time? Then no, like, no, no, I need to think. You don't need to think. My generation needs to think. Yeah. Shh, no, I think I might have done. But it uh, might be interesting that she'd say, I saw you do that. You want else to do it? And it might, might be good for you. I'd just like to have sex again, Justin. Do you know what I mean? We're just at that point So now. there's nothing. You don't think there's anything you've done when you were single? No. I think, look, when Laura and I, we had a, she listens to the podcast and she recently Who? told me, Laura. To you've told me you've pissed on someone in oh, the shower. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. You've never pissed on Laura. I forgot Laura. about that. I fuck. <laughs> I'm not even allowed to poo with the fucking door open. <laughs> oh, no, I did. Yeah, sorry. So there you go. I you forgot about that. I weed, what, because they I asked weed, you to? Oh, no, you didn't fucking shock them with it. They're like, what should we watch? We've got a couple of choices of DVDs. And they're like, oh, why? Why are you weeing on me? It's on my mum's rug. Where did you do it? Oh, God. <laughs> this is a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was with a, I was was with it, a, was there a sheet down? I was, yeah. yeah. A comedian weed on my leg once. <laughs> right. What? Another man. Yeah. What? Why? For a laugh. <laughs> Archie Kelly. Wow. Why? We were on the set of Phoenix Nights and uh, we walked down the <laughs> corridor and they just went, uh, hold it there because they were going for a take. And we all stood silently, we stood behind me and I just felt my leg getting warm. And he peed on my leg. Just for the fuck of it? Yeah. I mean, that's so funny. But you, hang on. How did you react? I couldn't, because I couldn't make a noise. You're, you're on the set of a major... TV comedy show. One of the made, most successful British sitcoms with of all one time. of the best known fucking lunatics in Peter K. Yeah. Like in charge of it. But we were, in a we were actually on the so we're just next to it. Oh right. I thought you were on set. I thought it was like, how annoyed would the director be if oh, they no, were because like, I didn't say anything? I was like I just wet my leg. But not on set. You weren't about to film a scene. We were walking towards the scene and he stopped. I don't know what you're doing. He's like, he's a weirdo. He's, yeah, he sounds it. He is. I don't know if you know the stories about him. Like this thing, like he picked his mate up for five aside, right? Every week for about six months, and put the, the it was winter, but put the aircon on full cold, and just said, I, "There's nothing I can do, mate. It's broke." The lad was shaking every day. Why? He just, just did. He was going out with a girl. He used to live next to Bernard Manning, right? He used to live next to Bernard Manning, and he was going out with this girl, and he used to leave the condom on Bernard Manning's car windscreen. <laughs> What's going on? Weird, isn't it? Have you done? Have you done? I can't, I can't, I can't, can't comprehend people. Archie Kelly. Yeah, the only thing devil. I do. Have you ever weed on anyone? No. My only, brother weed on me himself. once. What's going on? 1976, Man United lost the FA Cup. You doing your Ian Paisley impression? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm lying on the back bedroom floor crying, and my brother peed on me from the top bunk. Just for a laugh. Yeah, I can feel it to cheer me up. You know, now that there's two stories, though, it's starting to feel like it might be your, <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? Might be my king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, you're not really hard enough anyway. No. I, well, I'll tell you this now, that I've ne never desired it. Well, yeah, it's easy no. to say that, though, isn't it? Well, like, I'm saying there's, it. There's two stories. Gotta believe me. Just, you know, it makes me... Um, I, I do prank Carl. Whenever Carl's flying, I send him, like, text messages saying, like, bomb, terrorism nuclear thing because then I'm always like if like an airport security guy sees his phone over his shoulder you fucking and there's prick. loads of that that he'll get like fingered and you know, <laughs> that, like they'll have a look up of his bum or something okay? fucking bomb. bell end <laughs> that's how terrorists do it just a reminder there bomb yeah I just I, but like you can't even say it in the airport if you've got six text messages going can't wait to blow this plane up bomb nuclear weapons no I do you know what you need to do mate you know what you need to do Use voice notes. <laughs> <laughs> Do one of your great impressions. Make it Middle Eastern. Why? Because yeah. it sounds like the current uh, crop of terrorists. Oh, right. Okay. No, I no, honestly, you want me to do your Ian Paisley? <laughs> I don't do it anymore. <laughs> do you get that? Do you get the uh, Do you get the urge to shout bomb at an airport? Yeah. Genuinely, because as soon as I know I can't, yeah, yeah there yeah. is an urge to be like, uh, in your head, you're like, the worst possible thing you could do now is shout bomb. Yeah, I said out loud like, to oh. Jade, I, when we were flying back from JFK, New York, I said to Jade, isn't it weird that you can't say bomb at the airport while we were at the airport? <laughs> and Jade was like, are you fucking, are you stupid? I was like, what? She went, you've just said it in the sentence and I didn't realise what I'd done. <laughs> I I can't, just, you can say the word, can't you? No. But, 
No, if but they, I mean, if, if like a, a member of airport security sees you say the word bomb, you'll be taken for a chat. Yeah, and knowing that. But if you got a bomb, it's highly likely that you're going to be like double bluffing. Yeah, but they don't like. Oh yeah, they that's, don't just, that's how don't airport security you, work, isn't they it? They'll just give you the benefits of the doubt. That, that, I love that thought thought process. Yeah, this guy looks like a really evil looking terrorist. He's wearing all the terrorist garb, yeah. and he's like really he's muttering under his breath. But that's too obvious for a terrorist. <laughs> I mean, no terrorist would be that obvious. So he's obviously yeah, just maybe. a bit of a prankster. Come from central casting terrorists. There's a guy yeah. running through Terminal One saying "Death to the West," and he's <laughs> he's got a machine gun. But I feel like he'd be hiding. It better. <laughs> Let that one go. Let that. <laughs> one go not fucking stupid oh. oh god i can't believe we talked about weeing so much uh i am so hot i'm getting boob sweat should we do a uh have a word and then call this a this, podcast this a podcast yes sam mcguire sam mcguire journalist football guy massive liverpool fan you'll love him just he's a good lad afternoon fellas i need yous he scouts i need yous to have a word with my wife She'll sit in the conservatory, wrapped up in a throw, with the aircon on. She then gets ultra defensive whenever I mention it. <laughs> I realise I'm channeling my inner da, <laughs> but it's literally the biggest waste of money. She says she's trying to find the perfect temperature, but I can't wrap my head around the logic. This isn't a one-off either. Sometimes she'll walk around in a vest and shorts, claiming to be cold, making me shut all the windows while I slowly melt into a puddle of sweat. Am I in the wrong, tar lads? No, he's not. This is, this is typical of a, a partner isn't it just no i need it like this and like that and like that if it's cold turn the fan on and open the window or one or the other but you can't you can't you can't be wrapping your, it's just a waste of fucking money no it's it's one thing to be uh i'm cold and but been like in a t-shirt and shorts and be like i need to turn the heating up you're like well that's not the appropriate clothes but to have Are you the saying air, put a jumper on, but ha yeah. yeah, but have the air, to have the aircon on on a hot yeah. day in a and then wrap up. That's fucking weird. I don't, have, I don't even mind if Jade's like in a t-shirt and shorts and she's like, "I'm cold." I won't go like, "Oh, we'll put a jumper on then." She can put the heating on then. I understand. She, not what she can put the heating on. <laughs> I, she can put it on. She's allowed. <laughs> I, I don't. I'll give her the code. I don't mind her not wanting an extra layer on. I don't mind that. But you can't wrap yourself up and then be like. Oh, too I'm far. too warm and yeah. then turn the aircon on. That's just, it's the wrong way around. Yeah, you shouldn't be wearing a heavy roll putting aircon on. Environmentally. I feel like you've got, you've got like teenage kids, haven't you? Yeah. It's a whole new world of like, because Laura and I, it's so unsexy because you're like, I do want to get laid, but I do need you to do this with the recycling. And she's like, could you start doing that with the toothbrush? And it's like yeah. unsexy, isn't it? So you don't want to be the bell end who's like, listen, we need to talk about the heating. Don't just fucking whack it up to 22. Leave it at 20. Let yeah. it do the work. It's so unsexual, but you still need to say it. I feel like once Etta is older, it's a whole nother world of pain where you're like, oh God, someone's got control over the fucking heating that you're paying for. I spend a lot of time talking about that. Oh, really? Every time I walk past it. Just, just pop, changing it a bit. Just pop take it down. Pop it down one. Well. Just take it down two. See, I'd, I, I, I'd, I've said this before. I'd quite happily in winter, snowing outside, window open, t-shirt and shorts. But then, you can always warm yourself up. It's very hard to cool yourself down. Yeah, I hate being too hot in winter. Yeah, I just hate house. being too hot. <laughs> yeah, I get Close, it. Close. Yeah. Do you even with? I mean, the, you know, do you even have to touch it, or do you not have it on a phone? Or no, not at the minute. No, not. Do you want have one console that you just have on your really expensive fucking Sony fourteen? Well, I just got iPhone I just go. iPhone fourteen. House, make me comfortable, <laughs> Jeeves. No, I've not got all that set up. I will do, but um, you know, John Thompson, he does impressions as well. He's got like, <laughs> as well, yeah, as well as you. <laughs> you know the Alexa thing. He's got a brilliant thing. So he's got his lights all set up, lamps in his bedroom. And he goes, he goes, Alexa, play a storm, right? And this music comes on and it starts rumbling. And you can hear the water. When the lightning comes, all the lights flash on and off. It's like really good. Fuck. 
And it's oh. the same as when you're lying in bed in the storm at night. You can you can have it on and you create a storm in your right. house. That is literally what happens when you give immature bellends <laughs> millions of pounds. <laughs> John Thompson has done fucking brilliantly. Yeah. He's had a blinding career, cold feet, all of the things he's performed in. And it's basically got him to the point as a 50-year-old man going, tell you what, Justin, you know what I've got? I've got a computer storm that comes on yeah, so I can scare women. <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's comforting. <laughs> How much of a fucking narcissist do you have to be like, I'm having a storm wank. <laughs> Fucking just as the lightning follow the yellow big road. <laughs> well, that's a piss. Anyway. Uh, Pod done. I'm so sweaty. Have, you, got, have we got a song today or not? I've got boob sweat. You know, doing your impressions. He's done him. Is that all you can do, right? Yeah. We could we could fire one little thing we do at you if you want. Yep. So, um, you've got an audition. You're an actor, successful mm. actor, mm. and uh, you, you've been brought in. Yep. And basically, they want you it's a very specific role. Yeah. So it's just something about the way you look. The writer he had it in mind. Yeah. So we want you to improvise a scene. Yeah. As a Mexican car parking attendant. Yeah. <laughs> whose dog has just died. Okay. So if you could just do that for us now, mate, that's ridiculously hard. <laughs> He's yeah, he's a he's a successful actor. Same thing. Into character. Yeah, Justin, thanks so much for coming to have a word acting studios. Anytime you want, and try not to be racist. My dog has died. <laughs> <laughs> wow, straight to the point. I love it. But I have to come into work because I am a poor Mexican man. Oh, okay. I have no money. I have to make sure I park the cars and every car I park. <laughs> okay, you're not quite right for this role. No, um, give me another one. But, but there, there is another one uh, that we think you could, yeah, you, you could be good for. So, um, da Daniel, would <laughs> would you like to show me what this one is? Um, Seventy-two year old yeah. German window cleaner. Yeah, that's as good. Yeah, I clean the windows. It, this is a see. There's a bit too much oomph there. Remember, he's an old man, seventy-two, and he's only cleaning windows. Yeah. Because he's recently widowed, he's gone back to work. Okay. Uh, this is good. I cleaned the window now. I used to work for the BMWs. <laughs> and uh, now so that my wife died, I would sit in and I would look out of the windows and just think, I should be on the other side like Bella, my wife. Would, I, oh, God. It's like I'm waving to her. My. Why does he make them all so sad? <laughs> he makes them all so died. sad. His dog's just died. Hey, you've got a Mexican with a dead dog and okay. a German with a. A South Korean woman. Oh, no. Uh, and, uh, no, no, that's not fair. Chinese. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Um, how about a Canadian? I'm not very good at accents. <laughs> He's being a dick. Give me some, I'll do an English guy, but give me a scenario and I'll do that. Okay. I can't believe you. Brummy. Oh, God. Right. Who's just won the lottery. Brilliant. But he's also... There's a warrant out for the arrest, his arrest, because someone got made and they think it was him. Brilliant. <laughs> hey, I, honestly, that's made me more sweaty, the pressure that, that yeah, yeah, we yeah, just yeah, put yeah, Justin yeah. under. You really going deep on the character. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and it's the only it's one that's not had a death. And yeah. all his no, family no, dead. He's murdered somebody. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. There's been another Slightly death. obsessed. Welsh <laughs> bricklayer. Yeah. yeah. Who's ran out of bricks. Yeah. Oh, it's my bricks. <laughs> Gonna have to go to Travis Perkins. Than that. It's, that sounds more like Nelson Mandela than your <laughs> Nelson Mandela. Uh, Shall I tell you my Nelson Mandela anecdote? This is my favourite. Oh yeah, thing. close it out. It's close not, it not out. Nelson Mandela. No, no. This is the like we talk about comedians <laughs> in dressing rooms and things like that that goes on. We talk about that, weren't we? Joking in dressing rooms. You say that, I'm, I, and I said that I'm not a piss taker. About eight, nine years ago, I'm comparing the charity night at a comedy store in London. There's loads of comics in the room, but I'm comparing. So like, I'm, you know, door opens and in walks Eddie Izzard, wow. right? And everybody goes, oh my God, it's Eddie Izzard. Eddie Izzard. Mm. And he goes, ah, hello everybody. You know. He goes, I left a book here the other day. I was in here, I look, le left the book. And everybody's going, uh, is it under it, Eddie? Is it behind? Everyone's trying to weirdly help him out, right? And he goes, he goes, I says, what book was it? And he goes, oh, it's a biography of uh, Nelson Mandela. And I said, well, maybe he's taking a long walk to freedom, right? <laughs> And he just went, oh. 
a joke. That's what you thought was needed here. Oh, God. Oh, went, you pissed Eddie Hazard off? Yeah, and I went, yeah, 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 he did. <laughs> and then about a week later, I saw him again at the comedy store and he came in. Because it made me feel really weird, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came in and there was nobody else there. And I said to him, I said, oh, you know, we had this thing the other day. I said, and I felt a bit weird about it because, you know, I like, grew up buying your, you know, videos, you know, and all that. And uh, I just felt like I could upset you and I didn't want to do that. And he could have gone, you know, ah, I was, I was yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah. Or he could have gone, you know what? You was being a bit of a bell end, but you know what he said? Oh, I can't remember. I just went, oh! <laughs> Painful oh, shit. Hard, isn't it? The pressure when there's a fa like really famous comic and you're like, just please be all right. So I feel like that's more so of an Eddie Hazard to... story than Nelson Mandela story. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Nelson Mandela never came into comedy store looking for an Eddie Hazard book. <laughs> I tipped up left my DVD. <laughs> you're not going to pull him up on that one? Yeah. Was that good, wasn't it? That was quite good. I said I left my DVD. <laughs> uh, I want to live in a world <laughs> where... Eddie well, is Amanda, hard. like Eddie is hard. Why well, one day there will be a Liverpoolian woman on stage in Liverpool. There you go. Yeah, it's nice. Um, um, I'm so hot. It's been a pleasure. I've loved talking to Justin. Thank you to everyone for listening. That's it, innit? Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you. Um, if you've watched the episode, please give it a like, give it a subscribe, go to haveawaitpod.com, get some merch, see some live show details, which won't be there at the minute because uh, live performance is cancelled for the foreseeable. See the start of the episode. Uh, and go to patreon.com slash haveawaitpod. You can sign up. You get an extra episode every week. You get discounts on the merch and you get to be one of our mates because we really like all our patrons. Thanks, man. And the rest of you are fucking tight twat. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Thanks kidding. for watching. <laughs> It's like, why is my, why is your Liverpoolian impression dead, dead aggressive? <laughs> Justin, cheers, mate. Cheers. See ya. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.